kind of frozen a little bit here and there. Okay. Even if I tell you to watch what you say, you might you might still reject watch what you say. <laughs> Shadow Smokers Legion. 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 Shadow Smokers Legion for life. Shadow Smokers Legion. 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 And yes, I need a haircut. Shadow Smokers Legion, baby. And for those of you who couldn't understand that. Shadow, Shadow Smokers, Smokers Legion! Legion. Alright guys, it's Tony the Soy Sauce Assassin along with uh, four other people behind the screen. Can't see it because I have my entire screen covered their faces. That's right. <laughs> so so actually, uh, my team is waving, but none of you guys are going to see it at this moment. Because <laughs> it's covered, okay? So uh, while they still continue to make gestures that none of you guys can see, let's introduce what we're going to do today, okay? I am going to drink this thing from Yazer. He sent over this. And this is going to be one of the, the prize for the raffle. There's going to be 10 of these for the raffle. Now, if James or Jeff win this, I don't know how we got to send it over. This thing's heavy. This thing's 8 pounds. <laughs> this thing is heavy as hell. If you hear Jeff do that, you just going to send it to my brother, I guess. <clears throat> Yeah, something like that, because this thing is very heavy. I'm holding it with my hands, and then my hands are getting sore. Okay, that's how heavy this is. No, I don't lift weights, so, yeah. Okay, so we're going to smoke this thing. Ooh, 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 everything's popping out. Beautiful, beautiful bottle. Okay, so, you know, this is no joke. Even though I kind of wish this thing is actual, like, uh, wax, like, uh, like uh, you know, those, uh, what's the thing called? The thing with the wax on top, wax seal. So, and then I'm going to smoke it with the, with the, the Avidav Millennium, um, that he also sent me. So, you know, that will be a perfect pairing for me. Okay. Just, yeah, just so you guys know, that's a perfect pairing for me. Okay. We hope it'll be a perfect pairing for you. It will be a perfect pairing for me. And anyway. Okay. So now I will shrink this thing just a tad. I'm, I'm telling you guys this next zero view or right now. So we, we, we're okay. Actually, we're okay. Zero viewers. What the hell? I, didn't he say somebody was having life while we're having life right now? Ron from Ron Real TV. <clears throat> Ron from Ron Real TV. Why does that sound so familiar? Because he's in the group. <laughs> he's in the group, yeah. Oh, he is? How dare he? How dare he? Okay. Hey, Chapin's up. At least Chapin's up, right? Okay. Is Chapin up? Oh, no. So, Davidov, Vanillion. Millennium uh, Toro. Oh, this one has been in a humidor nicely. I can feel it. It's great. It's like, oh, oily. Very oily. Uh, yeah, and very toothy. Very, very toothy. Rapper. Be jealous, people. Be jealous, people. Usually, I don't tell you to get jealous because I bought the cigar. But since somebody sent it to me, be jealous. <laughs> Quick 30s up too. What's going on, Quick? Oh my god, it cuts beautifully too because it's nicely humid. Bro. Dry, it's medium dry. Okay. Alright, so let me dump, let me open this up and tell you guys how it's like. This is like a preview for you guys who is going to win this thing. And uh, you can judge whether or not to hoard this thing for the rest of your life or drink it. So, what is the. Um... What's so, what's so special about that one? Looks like it's so. This IPA. one is a it's a single malt scotch, single malt okay. scotch that is finished in the India Pale Ale cask, so IPA cask. So if you like to drink beer 
especially right. the IPA beer, you will enjoy the the woodsiness, woodsy note of this thing. So, okay. And uh, obviously, you know, to get single malt scotch, the whole thing had to be made in one place in Scotland. So. Okay. But you guys gotta like. It. Well, I heard that scotch doesn't necessarily have to be made in Scotland anymore. No, but single malt just means that you have to use everything from one area. I uh, gotcha. Awesome, almost like pure. Right. Just think of that. One. Well, it sounds like it's gonna be really good. Yeah. Well. That's about a forty, about a forty, about a forty dollar, forty five dollar bottle of of scotch over okay. here. Over here, it's, it's probably different prices for you guys. Yeah, yeah I'm sure it'd be about sixty bucks here <laughs> in Texas. And that's that's if you can find it. Right. If you can find it, I mean, I can find it because I can order stuff online. Oh, this is totally the things I like. Okay, Cause I I'm a scotch drinker. I'm more than a bourbon drinker because scotch usually have that fruity notes. This just a cap opening up. Pear, apple, oh gosh. A little bit of woodsiness. So sweet and has that citrusy note in this drink. You don't oh. think bourbon has, has uh, fruity notes? Bourbon has more of the wood note. All right? If you drink bourbon, it's more woodsy than a scotch. Scotch is almost sweet. It's almost sweet every time. So is it common for a scotch to have more fruity notes? Yes. That's probably why I got more fruity notes from that uh, Glenfiddich 12 year that I had. Oh my god. Alright, just that one drip makes me smile. Scotch is good. I like scotch. So. I'm much more of a scotch drink. There we go. The correct glass for drinking any drink whatsoever. Cheers, people. Cheers. <coughs> Jim Wilcox is here and Michael says he will be on for a little bit. I don't know where he's going afterward, but I guess he will be on for a little bit. Oh, uh, he's mean he will be on in a little bit. Okay. Okay, so it has a little burn, which is normal for any drink whatsoever. And once the burn wears down, is um it's sweet and the fruit notes come in more pear. There's more pear. Um, there's like a hint of like an apple note, it's almost like a green apple note. It's definitely a drink that you want like an ice in it or uh, a little bit of um, a drip of water or something like that to kind of work out that flavor because when I dump it in there, I can see the oil just go all over the place. And I don't taste the IPA. Uh, maybe a little bit, maybe a little bit, just a little bit of IPA, not a lot, like you barely can taste it, but it's definitely a scotch by nature, like the taste of it is definitely a scotch, so uh, I think that's got to pair with all that good stuff. Good, very good, today's a good day, I don't care about Thunderstorm, forget Thunderstorm, forget about it. Okay, and just when I say, it, can you guys hear it? Like the, the rain is yeah. dripping down so hard, I can hear it like hitting the house. Um, Let's see. Let's get some music going. Come on, YouTube. Load. There we go. Hashimoto! Hashimoto. Hello, Moto. What up, fellas? What's up, guys? Uh, how's it going? And ma'am. Sherry. All right, let's get the music going so we can start talking about crap. Josh, what's up, brother? What's up, buddy? Just uh, barely got home and uh, got some uh, screwball poured in my <laughs> smoke legion glass, y'all. Oh yeah, oh yeah. I'm not I glad I'm not the only one that's drinking tonight. <laughs> okay, yeah, so yeah. I will uh, later. So cat uh, is also on. Cat's online now. Okay, uh, let me light up this uh, millennium and. We'll talk about, first let's address some of the annoying stuff. Oh, we got drama again? No, it's not, it's, it's more like, it's not, or well, actually, I think that will be a drama, technically. Okay. <clears throat> so, 
what happened this week? We all know what happened this week, okay? Uh, we had the... Uh, what was it last weekend? This weekend? This, no, last weekend, right? We have the, the Drew Estate release of the Year of the Rat. Right. And we yep. all read about my, my, my thing, complain about how they screwed up, right? Like, right. in the end, they say that it was because they decided to change the rule when the show was on, like the, the reveal. So they po they sent, I'm pretty sure everybody who ever registered to them at all received at least three of that same advertisement saying the virtual release of the Year of the Rat, okay? And how to get the Year of the Rat and, uh, uh, and uh, what, what do you do to, to uh, you know, to get it. And I'm sure that they have read that three or four times. Here's the thing though, if you put out an advertisement of any sort, try to get people into your show to, for a purchase of something. You can't change it when everybody arrives. You know, right. legally, we call that bait and switch. You know, you know what I'm saying? Somebody else, somebody else on the page posted the same thing that you got. Yeah. I mean, uh, Joe Sparacio and uh, a few other people also bought into that, you know, plan. I mean, well, not plan, but the package. So right. they say it's either uh, a 20 count box or uh, 20 single sticks, which we pretty much all get 20 single sticks. You know, just buy whatever stick to, to, to match it. And then they, on the show, I guess nobody listened. They, they, they decided to change it to box only. So only if you buy two boxes or, you know, box of 20 or more to get that, the second tier prizes. But not, but not the box, the year the right box shouldn't have, wasn't supposed to count. No, Year of the Rat box supposed to count. It says on there, including Year of the Rat. Un unless you bought the multi box, which is like 40 sticks to qualify for their, their whatever lighter thing, you know, Jake while supplies last. So the, the big problem is that they changed that rule while they're at the, at the show. Or talk, tell the manufacturer to change the rule, which doesn't make sense, right? Because that will be considered as bait and switch. And I'm surprised nobody caught that. And, and like, you know, yeah, I complained, but here's the thing. Had I not complained, they probably would never say, oh, that's everybody who's missing it. Why? Because that's ridiculous. That's ridiculous, right? So that's what I'm talking about. You know, like sometimes when something's wrong, you kind of have to speak up. If you don't, they don't care. So I'm pretty sure they are not sending anybody who did not complain about it that particular day. So if you, if you, if you bought 20 sticks and you're watching this and you know you didn't get it, call them up and complain because that's not, not cool. I think that's not cool, at least. Yeah. Right. If we, I, if we didn't, the first time when I called them, the guy knows nothing. He's like, I don't know. I wasn't working that day, so I need to talk to my manager. Well, how long? How, when is the manager gonna be available? Well, she's in the meeting, so I don't know. Okay, so you don't know when your manager is going to a meeting, and you don't know when your manager gonna be out. Okay. So I said, well, is there estimate when uh, when the meeting will be over, so that you know I, she can give an answer. He said, I'll try to get back to you at the end of the day. I waited until like a few minutes before six o'clock to call him the second time. Oh, wow, somebody's yelling. <laughs> Whoa. Whoa. Okay, so, and then when I called the second time, the guy came back. That's when it pissed me off, okay? He says, You don't qualify, and usually we don't do this, but to make you happy, to, we want your business again, we just gotta send it to you. Right? At that time, I was pissed. At that time, I was pissed. I was like, not only you guys messed it up, you won't admit it. You say that I'm not qualified. And they made it make sound like I called into bag for something that I, I shouldn't have to start with. You're kidding me, right? You know, that's when I got really pissed off. And I was like, okay, so what do you mean? Like, you know, what I don't qualify. He's like, well, you buy in the box, that's one thing. And then, then you qualify for something else. You know, Year of the Rat doesn't qualify for this, blah, blah, blah. I was like, that doesn't make sense. But anyway, so he, he sounded like he's in a rush. He, I was like, okay, fine. That, that, that's fine. Uh, thanks. And then I came, uh, we hung up. And then, and that's, that's after I called back. If I didn't call back, I'm not receiving a call back that day because nobody knew I called back. I called the first time. By the way, did I say this cigar is really good? Very woodsy. Well, how did the third phone call happen? You the, the, third, third, the phone third phone call happened after I read everybody's comment. And then, you know, it's like, wait, it doesn't make sense. I can I go back to read the advertisement, all three of them. Try to make sure that I whatever I understand is correct and it's not... It's not grammar error or something like that. I even get it to my wife to read it because the way they stated. Let me pull that up so that we can we can actually talk about that. Let 
Now, first of all, that entire advertisement of where the rules are, what to do to qualify, has no punctuation. No period, no comma, nothing. Okay, so whoever typed that up, I'm sorry, you need, you need to, you know, when you do advertisement, comma and period is legally matters to what you say, yeah. you know? Okay, let me go back to... Uh, so, this is what they wrote, right? To qualify, number one is a box of purchase uh, of Year of the Rat or 10 Jewel Estate Cigar qualified for your first tier promo. So either or, right? You can get a box of Year of the Rat or 10 Jewel Estate Cigar that qualify for you the, the, the ashtray and two little cigars, okay? That, that nobody had a question with. Anybody who bought 10 at all got it, okay? And then the second one says, one, 20 CT plus box purchase or 20 single cigars, parenthesis, of any Jewish state, including Year of the Rat. Here's why it matters though, because there's no comma, no period. You can read it as a 20 count plus box purchase or a 20 count plus comma box purchase. Right? Well, well, you know, yep. you can have different, you know, where you put the comma will make it different, right? So it's right. 20 plus box to purchase or 20 count plus box purchase, right? That's where they, they screwed up here. Uh, and and then, but then here's the thing, it says, or 20 single cigar of any kind, including ear of the rat. So when they say including ear of the rat, you know, that kind of tells you that's how it is, right? And then the next one says two plus of that 20 box purchase of any Jewish state uh, qualifies, but then I think it excludes Year of the Rat. Uh, it includes Year of the Rat. However, here's the problem though. They limited one box of Year of the Rat per person. So it's, you can buy two boxes of that. How you gotta match it is by other, other, other things. All right. So I think that's kind of screwed up. And here's the thing. Here's a, here's a, what bothers me the most too. It says our box purchase will include one Year of the Rat cigar while supplies last. Okay, that's fine. But if you, they didn't say if you qualify for the second tier, you will not get that additional uh, year of the rat. You see, like they just basically making up the rule as they go, but didn't tell anybody. So if you if you plan to say, okay, I bought a box of year of the rat, I should get one year of the rat on the side, right? And I also qualify for tier two prices, which is a survival kit, uh, one another stick of year of the rat, Herrera, uh, Habano, uh, Toro. Asset 20 Robusto and the Undercrown Maduro. So that means I technically should have legally qualified for two Year of the Rat additional stick according to this ad. But they didn't say exclusion. All right, there's no fine print, there's no exclusion. I'll basically just have da 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 while supplies lot. You know, but I know when I bought it, supply is still there because when I bought it, people are still buying it. Right? So. so so I messed up the ad and I tried to correct that on the live, but that is too late. You can't just correct it on the live. Exactly, because that would be bait and switch. You baited us to go to buy that purchase and well, you change the rule afterwards. Yeah. yeah, it doesn't work that way. So truth that's why I read I read everything exactly and I called back again. I was like, you know what? You guys told me that I don't qualify for this because and we got even though you guys gotta send me to send it to me anyway. I would like to know which part of it did not qualify because I read the, uh, the the rule over again and that I do qualify. And then they put me on hold for a long time. At least 15, 20 minutes. And then they come back and say, yeah, uh, yeah, they messed up. So uh, we, we're going to send you exactly whenever you qualify. And then I was like, so just to just to clarify, so I do qualify for that, the, the survival kit, tier two gift and additional uh, stick of Year of the Rat. She's like, no, if you qualify for one, you cannot qualify for the other one. At that point, I'm like, at my dinner time, I was like, I don't really want to argue for one stick of the, uh, the, the Year of the Rat anymore. Like, you know, because like this, she's basically saying that if you qualify for tier two, you won't qualify. The box purchase includes one Year of the Rat cigar. And I'm pretty sure it's because they knew they don't have enough anymore. There's no point to argue with them. But at this point, I, we know that they messed up and they, you know, at this time, they didn't even really apologize. They just say, I oh, asked yes, they, they messed up. They changed the rule while they're in the show. You know, that that is bait and switch. They can't do that. So that is a bad yeah. practice, Corona Cigar. That no, because a... if you didn't qualify for the 
for the tier one stuff anymore. If you bought the tier two stuff, then you shouldn't get the ashtray or the other two cigars. No, either. when you it says when you qualify for tier two, it also qualifies for your tier one as well. Yeah, then you should have got the extra year of the rat. No, the year one rat is I'll not part of the you. tier one or tier two. It just said all box purchase includes one year of the rat cigar while supplies last. It's very, very bottom, not in part of that rule thing. Okay. So you Why can see, last? yeah, Why but, last? right. <laughs> but when I purchase my purchase, I have timestamp. You guys have the show that has time. Each supply still has, you guys still have supply. So you guys technically owe me that, right? When I bought it, there was supply. How many, how many singles did they set aside? It doesn't matter. When I purchased it at that point, when I purchased it, supply does have, you don't, you do have supply. So you have to give it to me. Legally, okay. you see, you see, you see the difference here. So, if I was to buy something, let's say uh, if I buy a car today's uh, today's uh, today's ad is buy one Civic Honda Civic, you get one Honda Civic for free while supplies last. Let's say if that's the ad, okay. And I want to buy a Honda. I left without that car. But when I bought the Honda, you had the you have all the other Honda sitting over there. When I figure it out and come back to say, hey, shouldn't I qualify for another Honda? Is it this normal Honda left? I can sue you for bait and switch and not following your, your contract and your ad. Because even though you don't have that right now anymore, when I bought it, that time when I signed the contract, you owe me a car. Right? So when I bought the year of the rat box, ordered online. The show was still going. They're still saying that there's more sticks going out, and then they literally says every box you buy, there is one uh, one uh, year of the rat for you. If you watch the show, they keep saying that. If you buy any box, you still gotta get the year of the rat, even though year of the rat sold out. Hey, Steven. Right. So that's that's the part. I I mean, I know that they're they uh, you know they sponsored Batia Maya and Bob the Cigar Guy and all that stuff. But what you what they did wrong is wrong, right? What they did wrong is wrong. They should apologize to people. They really should. Right, they really should. They should apologize to people and make it right. And especially those people who who did not know. Like you know, you guys wrote it wrong, so that's when you, you know, if you knew it was wrong, take it, you know, like a good business and 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 basically uh, compensate people that is missing. Now I don't pers particularly care. I mean, it's one cigar. What's the big deal? I want everybody else that that you know went to that that's in our group to know that you know if you didn't get it, you should you should ask them to. To correct that i mean again it's not a big deal i'm not i am not a fan of do stick to start with i just i smoke it here and there but i'm not a big fan so i i don't you know it's not a big big problem but you know you you, you have to you have to correct that when your business messed up right when your business messed up you had to correct that and and then that goes for everybody else too whoever also purchased that I hope that they don't they don't just become silent where like you know if nobody nobody calls them this like you know what if they didn't contact us then it's not our problem kind of thing i hope that doesn't happen basically a good business shouldn't allow that happen at least that's what i believe what do you guys think then anybody uh, any of you actually bought it no no for josh no for james oh james of course james <laughs> no for james <laughs> so was this through corona or who was it through huh that's through corona <laughs> cigar okay that's what I'm saying. Like I know, I know, I know. You know, you you uh do stuff with Corona cigars, but still, if they screwed up. They should come up, you know, and admit that they were wrong. They want to make it right, kind of thing. You know. I don't do anything with Corona. But I, I don't know if you do. I, I thought you do. Oh, okay. You so review you their know. cigars here and there, right? No, no but Bob does. It's they're, they're sponsoring Bob. Bob is being nice. Bob says if they don't correct it, let me know. I'll, I'll contact. Them. So Bob, Bob actually tried to try to see what's the situation and say if they don't correct it, we will uh, we will contact them for us. So it, it you know, again, I don't think it's anybody's fault except whoever wrote that ad and who executed that ad. Oh, I think I know what you're talking about. You were thinking famous, but I do it with famous, not Corona. Okay, yeah. So here, yeah, basically, I think Corona is not a bad company, but if they since they screwed up, they should they should apologize to people and really make it right for right. everybody who did it, not just for people who complain. For, for See, everybody. I was confused because I thought you were, I thought you were still on the whole Drew Estate, um, what do you call it, 
like from your bar smoker thing was that like a buy-in to be able to buy these cigars or what was it completely no different? no so basically bond smoker was canceled completely canceled right every yeah. single state is canceled and what they do but is they actually they do it pretty good they say we'll refine all your money including fees and everything they refine it all your money the next day really and um they will send you the swag still they will send you all the swag ex excluding the cigar because they can't give you a cigar without purchase so they will right. give you the swag well according to that i haven't got the swag so i don't know but they will send you the swag okay see i thought that was see i thought that's that was a live for drew estate as like an incentive to buy some of the drew estate stuff no 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 that was like okay. a i think it's because the, the bomb smoke is not happening so they don't have the unveil party so they did a virtual unveiling which they did it with corona cigar gotcha okay yeah. so that that's the problem I, I i you know that bothered me a little bit because i like i say i don't like to beg for something that i think i rightly purchased right if i give you the money and then that's what you say is gonna get uh you know you know for the fun of it you should you should still to you know to to go with that but who made the mistake with the with the advertisement? Drew Estates or Corona? I think Drew Estate was the one that made that advertisement, not not Corona Cigar. They just happened to go with Corona Cigar because the Corona Cigar has got to be the one that carried it with that launch. So you know, it's like a promotion kind of thing. But like I say, I think Drew Estate decided to change their mind and change the rule at the show. And again, legally they can't do that. And I think that when I called in the third time, they realized they can't do that. That made it rough for Corona Cigars to try to... Right? So Drew said, tell them that, oh, it's, on, it's box only. But on the ad, it says box or 20 cigars. But it's yep. making Corona look bad. Yeah, it's making Corona look bad. True. Yeah, and and I, I, would, I, I don't know if Corona is going to be able to correct everybody's box. Michael! Uh, Drew Estates will make it possible for them, but it'll take time, and that's not going to be good for Corona. I don't know if how... You know, because it's going to be a limited release, so I don't know if they have enough cigars to even do that. So, but who knows? Who knows? Hopefully, they will correct that correctly and everything will be resolved. But I would think if it's just an unveiling, they just need to, to, to be able to deal with it. But, I mean, they should be big enough to do it. You, I don't know how many boxes they end up selling that day. Because I'm pretty sure they sell quick and they sell a lot of them. So. Yeah, but basically, it's all about putting some more gold foil on it. Rat, right? But you know, <laughs> okay, no comment on that one. No comment on that one. That was pretty good. <laughs> okay. Hey, Michael. So those people who, who who joined us late tonight, I'm actually pairing my cigar with this bottle of uh, Glyphendich, uh IPA single malt scotch. Ooh. Okay. Yaza sent this to me, and this is gonna be one of our, uh, well, ten of our prizes for the raffle. Okay. Beautiful. I've got beautiful. my tickets. <sighs> yep, yep. I can't smell anything, but I'm gonna pretend everybody. I smell something. What did you say? Yaza's been blowing everybody's box up with that. Yeah, I like you know. I went to, I went to my other house to pick up cigars. And I came back and this big gigantic hot box just sits in front of my, my, my front door has those red stickers on it. At first I didn't look carefully. I thought it's one of those red stickers that's returned. Right? So it's like, oh shit, what did I send out that got returned? I look closely, it says do not drop. I was like, oh no, what is this? Open it up. Two bottles of whiskey in there, like ah and then first thing first thing when I open it up, I thought about Sherry because it was a bottle of uh, uh Blinton's. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, ooh, nice. And now, right away, I was like, I need to post that because uh, Sherry's gonna be very jealous. <laughs> I always be thinking about Sherry when I drink Blanton stuff. Yeah, and every I time I think about uh, Blanton, I think about Sherry. Yeah. I'm flattered. I'm so flattered. <laughs> <laughs> so, I knew this was gonna be a good drink. I mean, Here's the thing though, usually, most of the time, scotch is more expensive than bourbon. That's pretty true, right? That's pretty true. Yes. So, yeah. 
I Not knew much. that despite of the price, I, I I should be able to be enjoying it. I mean, yeah, it's sixty sixty dollars, seventy dollars, but that's if you can find them here and there. So the problem with the scotch is not everywhere it has it, right? And they always limited supply because it's like pure old cigars, you know. They are very good here and there. So I knew it was gonna be good, but uh, I was like, oh, I gotta try it. July, you know, if it suck, at least I can tell Yaza say, hey, uh, that, that 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 soy sauce might suck. You might not want to give it to people, <laughs> right? Right? So. But fortunately, fortunately, it didn't suck. It's actually really, really good. Now I will, I will pair, I will put this in the same level as. Um, it will be definitely number one. You'll be higher than Harmony. It's, it's much better than Harmony. Okay, it's better than Harmony Masters Alive. It's better than. It's better than the Yoichi non-aged expression. So if you if you if you like Scotch. Kind of, kind of know where they put it out there, okay? Now, in terms of like just whiskey alone, this is better than Macallan 12, right? In, in my opinion, it's better than Macallan 12. It's better than like you, like you won't even put something like Wild Turkey 101 in this this category. This is much, much better, much, much more smooth. Uh, the flavor <laughs> is much, much good. So you know, it's it's good, it's good. Get off of my Wild Turkey 101, dude. That, that's how many people? How many? How, how many of you actually drink one on one straight? Yeah. <laughs> You're crazy, James. Jesus Christ! You're not supposed to drink that straight. Why not? It's not meant to be. It's not meant to be. Yeah, it is. One on one is one of those I dump in the glass. I will top it off with club soda because you can't. Just, I just don't drink that straight. It burns. <laughs> I drink I drink Booker straight, so come on. Wow. You have issues. Booker, <laughs> I got sixty seven percent Booker, so I, I won't even drink my uh uh Nika from the barrel straight. So I, I mix that with a lot of fun. Yeah. That's the point. When you buy something that high concentration they give you baby I mean like baby bottles is so that you only put a little bit at a time. Okay? Just saying. But it is a good drink. I think people who win this is gonna like it. Now, yeah, I think Yeza knows his, his alcohol. <laughs> I think Yeza really knows his he's 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 alcohol. He have a lot of alcohol. I'm <laughs> just yeah. saying, like you know, I don't buy nearly as much as he does. He probably buy a case at a time, just for the sake yeah, of it. He, he gets a lot of alcohol. Actually, we can't say alcohol. He bought a lot of soy sauce at a time. <laughs> Right, he buys a lot of soy sauce. So yeah, he's got he's put up a lot of. Uh, he never showed me what the what the five cigar sampler is, but I don't think anybody will complain whatever he sends. Right, no. I don't think anybody can complain. He sends. Nope. It's almost like he before he sends anything, he goes to our post and just read every single post, and then he sends out whatever we smoke. It's crazy, it's crazy. But here's the thing, though. Y'all know uh, when Yaza had a semi cigar, he had to, he doesn't have to read what I like. <laughs> you just got. Oh, yeah, but there you go. Yep. So, yeah, I think he does that too. Cause I got Buffalo Trace and Crown Peach. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> He's he probably have like a shopping list. It's like oh, uh, uh, Ash Queen, Blintons, and oh yeah, Peach right there. <laughs> Definitely a great member. I can't complain about him. I can't complain. Anyways, so uh, in turn of the raffle, I, you know, today I was gonna smoke that that uh uh, uh the, what's the thing a kosher cigar, but I couldn't bring myself to smoke it. Uh, you know, it's like, what if I, <laughs> what if I want to really go kosher for the day? You know, so uh, one of the kosher cigar will go to the raffle, sponsored by James. I still don't know how how cigar could be kosher, but one day I'll figure out. One day, one day I'll figure out. Right. Rolled on a kosher table. It has to be blessed, right? It has to be blessed by a rabbi here and there. No, they actually have to have to control the whole growing of the tobacco and everything, yeah, everything. about it to make sure that's separate from the other tobacco. Yeah. Which I don't, if, which I don't see how that will work, but. We will respect the religion and call that kosher. So yeah. Segre segregated tobacco? Come on. 
Yeah, we will, we will accept that they, we will accept their uh, explanation that it was segregated and that a rabbi made sure that it was segregated. Yeah, <laughs> whatever works, whatever they think works, we, we respect that. We say that. You know, we have no reason to doubt that. Okay, now let's talk about things I post today. All right, I post a, a, a post about Cuban cigars, and I think that's a sensitive topic. People watch this, it's gonna all get pissed off, kick their pillows, and destroy their computer screen because I say something about Cuban. Now, here's the thing number one, understand this no one is that impressed about you can buy Cubans, okay? People outside America can all buy Cubans. So it's okay, you don't have to defend that the fact that you got Cuban and whatever your source is. Okay. If you like your cigar, good for you. Alright. And if you like imitation cigar, even better. Just make sure you get an even better price. So that so that if you knew you're getting from an imitator now that I posted how to identify that top and bottom band, you can probably haggle for an even cheaper price. So whoever is sending you those those imitated Cuban cigar that you, that you actually like, keep buying from this person. That's okay. But you, next time you haggle until it's a dollar. Like, I know those are fake. Send them to me for a dollar. Okay? Just just do that. Just do that. Okay? If you like if you like imitated Cubans, that's okay. Some people actually like it. They smoke it. They're like, this is the best Cuban I've ever smoked. Okay? That's fine. All right? That's fine. No one's gonna argue with you that it is the it is the Cuban that you love. Okay? It, it's fine. You can you can love it you can you can like it i have no problem with that it's not my money right if they like it that's all that matters right if you like it it's totally fine what the information i give you use it to your advantage now you know it's imitation get a better price you know don't pay 18 dollars 20 dollars for imitated cigars pay a dollar for it all right and they probably still make profit at a dollar so that's good right That's what I'm saying, you know, and then and, and for the group people go take a look. There is so many tell signs. I know there's they have hologram and all that stuff. The placement of the hologram is what tells you is real. And, and don't come argue with me because I probably buy from the same place. You know, James or something like that. I don't know. Right. I, I don't really care for uh, for Cuban cigar, to be honest with you. I personally, I like American cigar better and there's no people. There's not a lot of people that goes out and imitating American cigars. They're great and they're not that expensive. So there's no point. Like why? Like uh, I think it was Tom, Tony Murray that said it. That says that why will you go imitating a three dollar cigars? <laughs> right. <laughs> go through all that trouble to yeah. to imitate a three dollar cigars and sell it for two. <laughs> right. Doesn't work that way. Doesn't work that way. And I can I, I so, here's the thing, though. China doesn't, Chinese people don't bother to go imitating Cuban cigars. You know why? If you sell cigars at all, you pay a large amount of tax. And uh, if you sell cigars without license, that is a huge, huge, huge fine. Nobody will bother doing that. Nobody bother doing that in China. It doesn't, it doesn't make sense because you actually get incentive for selling Cuban cigar right now in China. So if you're a cigar shop and you sell Cuban cigar, you get like subsidies from the government or something like that. It's crazy. So they wouldn't I want to sell fake ones. I think we can make a lot of money selling fake Chinese cigars. No. If you imitate Chinese cigar and try to sell chi fake Chinese cigars, it's huge fine. Like if you get caught, you're done for. Okay? And chopped off. I'm talking about here. <laughs> or in the United States. I don't know. I don't know why would anybody go go through the trouble to to imitate a big Chinese cigar in America, because they're probably much better off imitating Cuban cigars than Chinese cigars. So I, I don't know. Figure out that they're fake because they would use maybe Japanese text, you know. <laughs> they get subsidies. Subsidies. Anyway, so in in China, actually, the the, the biggest problem is counterfeit cigarettes. People make counterfeit <laughs> cigarettes. <laughs> they do. They yeah. make counter I don't. I don't know how you gotta make counterfeit cigarette because cigarette is trash anyway. So they just sweep trash in on top of trash to make counterfeit cigarette. I don't know. I don't know how that works. But they make a lot of counterfeit cigarette. I think they just put regular cigarette, but the packaging is not like a, like those high brand cigarette. There are some expensive cigarettes. Yeah, they're, they're premium cigarettes. 
I don't know what the difference is, but scream a secret. I don't know why why Matt Hashimoto is like laughing to death right now over there. Oh my bad. <laughs> he must be reading something really funny. No. <laughs> Just enjoy the show, man. But China, China makes counterfeit cigarette. I don't know how how that works because cigarette is we do like next to nothing in terms of cost. But I they, make they, make, make, they make the counterfeit cigarette. cigarette like what what is in the counterfeit cigarette? I really I really wonder because uh, that's one of those things they when they caught someone, it's pretty much you can expect a lifetime in jail or something like that for counterfeiting cigarette because they tax cigarette like crazy. <laughs> So I personally, ooh, what was that? That's the weirdest thing happened ever. Okay, so I took a puff of of this cigar, and I burp while I blowing out the cigar smoke, and I taste fruit. <laughs> That's so weird. Yeah, Shane Dean asked, uh, "Why? What the hell were you counterfeit cigarette?" I really don't know what counterfeit cigarette is like. But what they do is they actually catch people. And I think what it does is really just take regular cheap cigarettes, which they are all like into putting into like name brand boxes. Like for example, if you if you smoke something like marble in China, that's imported good. That's expensive. So they probably just do that. Print in marble boxes and put like uh Mr. Chang's cigarette in there. I don't know. <laughs> wow. <laughs> And they smuggle them into Europe and they sell them for half the price of what normal regular cigarettes cost over here and people go and buy them. What I know is my brother buys cigarettes from Canada because it was cheap. I know, I yelled at him a billion times, but he likes to smoke like girl cigarettes. I don't understand why. Because here cigarettes. you pay like 70, 70 bucks for a carton of cigarettes and he buy them by the boxes, 30, not even cotton. If you get a carton for 30 bucks, um, you know, people do it. Now, if, if you ask what girl cigarette is, well, I consider girl cigarette like menthol or anything that has weird flavor cartridges, okay? His cigarette, you take it out, you had to break the end or something like that. Oh my pops, God. And then he will smoke it. Break the end of the ambulance. There's some sort of capsule in there. He breaks it and then smoke it. I was like, Two. Yeah, they just came out with those a few years ago. Wait, Matt, why would you know? Because <laughs> I used to smoke cigarettes. Bad. I smoked cigarettes for a very long time. Anyways, yeah, he smokes those. I, I yelled at him and tossed cigars in his face and say like, smoke. Don't embarrass me. So, yeah. <laughs> you know, it's almost like, what's, what's that? Arnold Schwarzenegger and Jimmy Kimmel? Don't embarrass me. Don't embarrass me. Just smoke here. Dab it off. That's how you gotta smoke. <laughs> but yeah, he still smokes cigarettes. I don't understand why. And, and I can't I can't stop. I can't stop it. Even though he have more than enough cigars to smoke, he smokes cigarettes. Oh, is your David off moratorium gonna be over at the end of this year? Say that again? You gonna start buying David Offs again next year? Yes. Of course. <laughs> <laughs> I'm using this year to smoke some of my Davidovs, so next year I have to, uh, yeah, you know. That's five more, yeah. <laughs> hey, it's already special that I took a year off. Well, not even a year off, more like semi year. Has off. It hasn't been a year yet. And I already did buy some Davidovs. Yep. What's interesting though is he took the year off of buying David off before all the coronavirus thing hit. And he didn't have the income. It's awful convenient, man. It was almost like he knew about it beforehand. <laughs> <you know? theory. laughs> I know some people that know some people that know some people. <laughs> yeah, FBI, try, try, FBI you know. raid. FBI raid. <laughs> he came. He be, came back from China, and then he says, "I'm not going to buy you David Offs for the rest of the year." And then all of a sudden, boom, boom, <laughs> boom! Insider <Just> trading. 
<laughs> the chief say insider trading. <laughs> Just saying, you know. Hey, hey, chief, chief. Let's be fair, okay? I didn't go. I didn't go out there and buy a lot of Chinese cigars so that I could use on the raffle. You know, if I had new, I would have. Chief called me the next Masa store. Yeah. <laughs> I gotta be honest with you. If you gotta be a criminal, be like Martha Stewart. She got away easy, okay? She got away easy. Yeah. All right? She did everything she needs to do. Go serve for a few years, kept all her money, came out and do more TV show with Snoop Dogg, okay? Yeah. All right? That that's how you do it. How you be a criminal? That's how you do it. Yeah, except one of them actually went to fucking prison. Oh, what? <laughs> Yeah, Snoop Dogg may be G as hell, but you know, he'd never been to prison. True, true. He always get away with it. But you know, the worst thing he, think he does is what? He sings some songs smoke and he smoked weed. Okay, so that, yeah. that's the only thing he did. So yeah, it's not like he did anything crazy or anything. Yeah, that's the only thing he got caught for. Right. You know, if you if, if go over there and, and really, you know, going through that war with uh, Biggest Small and Tupac, then I will kind of give him respect. But he didn't do shit, so. Right? He didn't do shit, but you know, his choice, you know, so I'll game. give him that. He doesn't want no part of that game. I don't think he wants. And I, 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 gotta, I gotta be honest with you. I don't even know that detail of what the East and, East side and West side war is all about. Because they kill singers. That doesn't even make sense. They could have made so much more money. Yeah, I know, right? They could have made so much money by like more. having an actual release limited edition diss tracks <laughs> okay right. if they just diss track right. every and there they will make more money and then just you know let the people decide who had a better diss track and rap right. would have been so good for so long if they had just stayed right if they they if they just go with the diss track i think that would have done better is ipa still burning or is it mellowed out now is it what is it ipa is it still burning or is it it's still burning. Drink. It's still burning a little bit here and there. It doesn't get diluted that that much. The oil in there is great, All right? So it's it's good. It's good whiskey for sure. Good By the way, I wanna uh, since Chief's on here, congratulations on your one year anniversary of your show. Yes. You know, I remember time where we all go up there. So Chief needs to have his own show, right? Remember that? We all like Chief yep. needs to have his own show, and he finally did it. Now he's consistently Thursday. Uh, since he's not on there, he doesn't get to plug, but I'll plug it. It's Thursday. That, that, that one year went by fast, too. That, yeah, the one year went by fast. I didn't even realize it's one year that quick. Me neither. Steve Saka said he shouldn't call it Chief Talk anymore. So Why is he so, 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 what? Our guy is Chief Talk. What do you want to talk? What do you want to call him? I don't know, but Bob said there shouldn't be two different things. You know, it, it sounds like two different things when it's. Chief Talk and Bob the Cigar Guy, they should be one entity. No, I think I think Chief is Chief. Chief is himself, you know. Bob is Bob, Chief is Chief. You know, maybe one day Chief decides to do uh, a yeah, separate that's channel. Yeah, Steve Saga said that was, that was confusing. Well, Steve Saga can say whatever he wants. <laughs> I'm smoking a Steve Saga right now. Congratulations, you have contributed to Steve Saga's new yacht. <laughs> <laughs> he makes good the chief is not a, chief is not a cigar reviewer either. he just talks so i right. mean chief is like a family guy okay treat him like a family yeah. a friend that you know chat with you and enjoy his cigars that's it you know he doesn't really review so it's it's a good thing yeah, yeah i love it i like it i like his show I, I watch it here and there. I just I just silence hell because usually Thursday I'm busy. So when I go in there, my phone rings every like five minutes. So I just jumps in there here and there. But here's the thing though, Chief always make his channel all fancy and everything with the chat thing going on the side and everything. He got it all worked out. Not like me, like yeah. I have all this thing going on that the words are overlapping uh, Hashimoto's face and nobody even realizes it. What the fuck? It's okay, come on, Matt. We just we just had had to hear your beautiful voice. You know, we don't have to see your face. Oh, yeah. You know. <laughs> and we don't need to see you. Yeah. 
We, we don't oh. see it. We, we got you. We got you. Just like you know, Matia Maya right now, we don't see his face. We see his picture. You know, super cool, black and white gangster. What? Oh, uh, that's two freaky, Asians man. One here. <laughs> huh? Say what? Too many Asians here on this on this side or what? <laughs> now I start to slowly think that you're not even Asian anymore. Oh shit! Need, that's crazy shit. Get demoted to white people. Matt, Matt, Matt's a super Matt's a super white guy. Yeah, he's inside. like a banana, man. I'm telling you. Yellow outside, super white on the inside. Yeah, I don't give a shit. I'm an Oreo cookie. I don't give a damn, bro. Oh, oh. <laughs> but y'all know you love that white stuff. <laughs> oh, oh, God. Oh, God. Even don't know how to get onto the, onto the, the live. You got to tell him how. Uh, Bullshit. Yeah. Bullshit. Yeah, we can, yeah, we can give him a link. Hey, hey Chief, I'm gonna send you a link. Uh, keep going on my show, man. My show is gonna go platinum uh -oh. if it goes on my show, man. I'm telling you. Platinum. My show is gonna go platinum. Oh. I'm scared. I'm scared. Why? Cause I'll get like, you know, then that, you know, Chief jump on my show, I'm gonna get like 500 subscription overnight. You're gonna get... Yeah, then you'll have to smoke it, you have to smoke that cigar, right? I'm going to, uh, on, on, uh, uh, on the raffle show. Just to make fun of myself over time. Yeah, I know. But Chief didn't finish it either, so, you know, I don't have to finish it. No, I know he didn't, he was kind of, you know, wimped out. <laughs> Bob did, though. Bob didn't. <laughs> Bob well, Chief probably, I, I could, I, I would bet right at the beginning that the Chief wasn't going to finish it because he was, he was whining about it when he first started. Yeah, yeah Bob was giving him a bunch of shit because he was trying to back out. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So I figured he probably would, you know, would whip out. Why is this Steven not showing on my list? Steven is not showing James on my James is not mean, Steven. <laughs> I'm just telling the truth. <laughs> I see. <laughs> I can't find Steven on my on my messenger. I'm not kidding. S T E P H E. That's what I type in. Nine. Steven. Steven blocked me. I'm telling you. Steven definitely blocked. Me. I can't see him. Uh oh. Uh, maybe this one works at four more D at BMW. That's how it's, that has. Been. I can't tell because it's not his picture. It's actually a white guy and a black guy in there. Yeah, that, he took a picture, I think, with uh, with another guy. Okay, here we go. Uh, let me get the link. <laughs> that sounded so wrong when you said that. <laughs> That's his best friend, he said. Okay, okay, yeah. okay. There we go, no, Steven, no, no, I sent no, you the no. link. You can just click the link and join. James, <laughs> Steven, I never I never accept anybody's uh, friends request after a while because uh, uh you know it just gets too much. Everybody send me weird messages and here and there. There's there's one guy that tends to send me naked woman pictures. I'm telling you. So I had to delete that guy. <laughs> Tony's so famous, he gets that just Brandon friend James requests all day, every day. I'm not even kidding. Here's the thing. I don't think I'm famous, but here's the thing, though. Everybody who friends uh, Chief or Bob or uh, Martina Maya or uh, Cigar Mechanic, like they add me to the group. They just go in there and add everybody into the, in the, on their friend list group, and they add me to their group. I mean, add me to their friends. I was like, I don't even know you. Stop stalking me. I'm afraid. You know so so i have to stop adding people to my private life and my private life had to be very private that's why it's private <laughs> wow you guys should get to see I... this me this me right now the glasses nerd me right we've got we've gotten to see both yeah i mean yeah. one time or whatever, you know you're forgetting six months that's okay nah. <laughs> i don't know if i remember seeing you with the glasses on you do? What we do you even don't? got to see the soap on a rope, you. So uh, I did see that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you guys. Holy crap! Holy crap! So, 
So I have not seen you with the glasses. I have. You know, all my, all my shows on video, you get to go back and watch it. You know, it's only 130 something two hours. Yeah, fuck. <laughs> <laughs> I honestly don't even remember which one. <laughs> I honestly don't even remember which one I wear glasses. And it was only like five minutes of one show. Oh, snap. <laughs> oh, snap. Oh, there Steven, just so you know, you're muted to start with, so you gotta unmute yourself. Welcome to the party. Big Chief, what's up, big dog? Man, pass it, moto. Hey, Chief, what's up? Me, what's old up, Chief? man James. I'm not me. <laughs> just telling the truth. For me, as a snake. As a snake. What is up, Steven? <laughs> What is going on, my Legion family? I want to say before anything, thank you all for one year. If it wasn't for the Legion, if it wasn't for you guys who follow Bobby Cigar Guy, I never would have been able to start up anything. Especially Miss Sherry, because my first ever Chief Talk, I was completely by myself with Miss Sherry for like an hour, and she stayed on there. Whoop! Whoop, whoop! (laughs) That was a great show, great show. I learned a lot about Miss Sherry and her family and how wonderful of a woman that she is. Aww. I, I, I don't I don't doubt that. I would never challenge that statement. <laughs> you if he left. Wait wait, who left? James. James. <laughs> oh, he probably oh, got booed. He went back. I thought I made him cry. <laughs> James is like, I'm out of here. <laughs> He shed one You're time. muted, James. <laughs> yeah, so Chief, how does it feel? Like does you does it feel any different to be you know always have to pick your Thursday to do the shows now? Um, I mean it's not different that I have to do Thursdays. It's just I've actually gotten super used to Thursdays, you know, being Chief Talk Day. Um the thing that I'm getting used to is just sponsorship and you know, having reads and things like that and still continuing to reach out to companies to sponsor the show and um, just like the actual logistical side of it that I've never had to do before. Good, good. So, but like before, let's, let's talk about past, okay? Before everybody tells you to do your own show, have you, you know, ever considered to do that show anyway? Like, you know what, why, no, why, why, why don't you show kind of thing, no? No, um, so with, with Chief Talk, I had always told Dad with, with the, sh- the, the YouTube show that I always wanted to be behind the camera. I never wanted to be on the, the recording side of the Uh-oh. camera. I just wanted to be solely um, editor-in-chief. And so I had done a couple live streams. We had done a giveaway, a big giveaway of 1,000 subscribers. Yep. And uh, Or big, big back then, um, since the Smoke Con Stimulus Package thing. I don't think we've ever been top that, but or us can never top that but um i'd always wanted to just be away from the mainframe of the the small you know influence i have on the channel and dad said um on our way back home from the florida barn smoker hey i've had a lot of people reach out and say they want to see you you on on the show um what do you think about you know doing a a dedicated live show and i said i don't think so he said well let's try six weeks right a month and a half let's try a month and a half of, of Chief Talk, and if Chief Talk, or if, if we didn't even call it Chief Talk then, we called, we decided on the name Chief Talk Episode 1. Um, but um, it went to six weeks, and we had, I think, 15 to 20 people watching, and um, we decided it was still, you know, something to pursue and continue, so we continued and pursued, and we got to <clears throat> January 1st, and I said, you know what? Since it's a new year, why don't we just make a new season of Chief Talk? So every first of the year, we'll we'll make a new season of Chief Talk, and so we're now a full year. It was uh, May thirtieth was the actual one year date of Chief Talk. That's crazy, man! It went by so fast. Dude. Yeah, I, really I remember. When, I still remember like yesterday that we start. We, like everybody was on the on the Bob show, and just like Chief needs to get on show, Chief. I remember that. Thank you, so. Tony. Thank you, Tony. You, it's all your fault, Tony. It's, it's all your fault. fault. It's my fault now. Okay, I'll take that one. That's okay. 
I'll take that one. <laughs> that one I will yeah. take. That one I will take. You know, in the future, when when like Chief became someone super famous, I'll be like, I'm the one. It's my fault. It's my fault. <laughs> <laughs> it's your fault. And since it's your fault, I don't have to pay any royalties. <laughs> <laughs> I'll give Miss Sherry all my royalties. Just give me a bottle of soy sauce once a year. Hey, if you ever got too much loyalty and then you got nobody to give to, you don't have to give it to me, just donate it. Donate it to any charity, I'm okay with it. Chief's like... <laughs> <laughs> so Chief, have you thought about like expanding that? I know Bob is pretty much doing an episode of something like pretty much every day. Pretty much every day. Have you thought about expanding yours to be more? Um... Um, I'm not sure. I mean, right now it's really good at just how organic one night a week is. Um, you've got YouTubers out there or, or Facebook shows who do multiple shows a week. And I know for me, I mean, I've got, you know, a brand new daughter. Well, not brand new anymore. She's two months old. But, um, still feel like still yesterday. Pretty new. <laughs> I mean, no, but that's <laughs> real. It's, yeah, I still feel but, like yesterday. You know, you know, family time is something that we always talk about on the channel and being family centered and things like that. So. Um, we never want to do anything that would, you know, prevent, you know, to get into that family time. And um, when we started, when I started talking about, when we decided to finally do Chief Talk or, you know, hanging in with the Chief is what the first one was called. Uh, um, I kind of wanted to make sure it was a day where I knew I wasn't busy um, and a time that was after Jackson's bedtime. And so Jackson goes to bed at eight o'clock. Um, I wanted to make sure that I had enough time to, you know, help with bath time or read a story or do whatever it is um, with him, but also a night where I didn't have something like, you know, I have church on Wednesday nights, um, you know, family hangout time on, on, the, on the weekends. And so maybe eventually it, it turns into something, you know, a, a little bit more involved, um, but I, I'm not sure of a, an extra show. I think it'll just be more of building on the show that I have, because like I, you were saying earlier, you know, I've got all my stuff now set up where I've got my screen and I have rolling ads on the bottom and I have a, a directory on the side and things like that. Um, it's, I don't know, just, I'm trying to keep it organic and not too, not try to get too Hollywood. Uh, Cause I think you can get lost in all of that Hollywood aesthetic. Now I, I, I want to, totally I, I want to put this out there. Okay. And, and, and most people doesn't know, and this, there will be a question involved and then you guys can answer this if you want to. I know some people don't feel comfortable to answer this. Okay. For those people who doesn't know, it costs a lot of money to do streaming. Okay. It costs a lot of money to do shows. It costs a lot of money to make video. Okay. And a lot of people is just watching the YouTube video as like, you know, it's normal because <laughs> nowadays everybody is like YouTube stars. Okay. Everybody's doing that. But understand this, okay? Without, without any sponsorship, doing a show is extremely costly, okay? Extremely costly. So if you can su support Chief when it comes to financial, like you know, rallies and stuff like that, do help him because I, it, it does cost a lot of money. Like, if, if they don't tell you how much money you, 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 they, they, it costs, you will never imagine it costs this much, okay? So me on the side, because I buy stupid stuff anyway, so it doesn't count. Let's talk about this. Like, how much money have you bought? For yourself for your own show in terms of equipment um i mean it's kind of hard to to put an actual numerical value to it um because i haven't written it all down and we bought things for chief talk or the channel that were you know that are like we bought a gimbal right <laughs> and that was four hundred dollars or three hundred fifty dollars and the gimbal is really only good for when we're doing location shoots Barn Smoker covers that, right? You know, Barn Smoker going to Nicaragua. Um, those are those are huge location shoots. So we take those things with us when we go do that. Well, 2020 Barn Smoker is not going to happen. So it's like we spent, you know, all that money on the gimbal. And we're not going to use it this year unless we go do some, you know, cool Bob the Cigar Guy parkour or something downtown Greenville. <laughs> um, but, yeah, that sounds good. But, I mean, I like you, guys, you guys have all seen, and, and the Shadow Smoker Legion is probably – well over 50% of the, the funds that we've raised for the studio. Uh, and the studio is coming, you know, it's an actual building now. Um, and it's not, it's not complete. It's, it's a work in progress where we have everything that we need, you know, in motion to, to set forth. And a lot of that is because of our, our partnership with Drew Estate and Corona Cigar. Um, 
and now that we don't have to travel to barn smokers this year because we do pay for our own travel um you know we get to take the money that we had set aside for travel for 2020 and now allocate that to either okay we can save that for travel next year and then use the money we were going to spend next year on travel on something or just use this travel and then next year continue to budget in the travel as we wanted um but you know it's a huge thanks to the shadow smoker legion and, and you guys with um you know the the donation to cigars for warrior last year um the raffles um buying the, the swag that we've we've set up um the uh, you know there's a lot of shadow smoker legion family who are our patreons and um they are so 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 um patient with me because i do a terrible job at making sure patreon gifts get out on time um <laughs> to those who qualify for patreon gifts um but you know we we really owe a lot to the the shadow smoker legion and you know we know none of you guys have ever try to hold that over our heads but we're just so thankful and indebted to the shadow smoker legion for being as awesome as, as you guys and, and, and gals are uh with buying the merchandise and watching the videos and just spreading that 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 love that family essence that we share with the the bob cigar guy channel i mean we we've said i've said on multiple chief talks uh, and dad said it you know and nauseam on his videos that you know we're not going to tie ourselves with companies or groups who are toxic or caustic to the community and the you know if if we tie ourselves to somebody we tie ourselves to a group or we tie ourselves to a sponsor it's because we've vetted them and we have taken the time to 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 look and see is this somebody who could either make us look good or make us look bad is this somebody who's going to make the the our environment bad or is it going to make it you know, you know are we going to benefit from it and the shadow smoker legion has done nothing but benefit the channel and benefit the cigar community cool cool thank you so what about you, Martin? How much money have you spent on equipment? Sorry, there's a lot going on here. They got music playing, kids in the backyards. Um, what was the question again? How much money have you spent on setting up to, uh, uh, you know, make your own videos and stream here and there? Um, I mean, I lost Just ask me. I got, I mean, I got a new microphone. Um, I've got a new camera that we're trying to buy. Um, I mean, I don't know. Rough I'll estimate. have to think about that one. Rough, Rough estimate. estimate. Uh, pull up about five hundred bucks right now. Okay. So, just put it out I there. Don't know. That's not. I don't know that's not counting. Exactly. That's not counting the like the software and all that that I yeah. have to use every month. I'm not sure of our exact estimate, and I, there's no way I could really sit down and quantify because I've lost count of things that we purchased for the channel or for the studio. Obviously, I have no idea how much we spent on the building that we built because it, it also, you know, we all of the the studio was funded completely through the Bob and Guy channel. But we also, you know, had, my mom and dad used their own money to build the rest of that building. It's not two separate buildings; it's one building with the studio built into the building. But um, I mean, this camera right here, this Canon or Sony A7 uh, II, is um, is uh regularly sixteen hundred dollars and we got it um on sale from best buy for nine hundred ninety nine dollars um so now that's not that's not for you know specifically for cheap talk this is for um instagram this is for youtube videos reviews um but again you know so we've got that that gimbal um and then we're, we're buying a, a brand new computer uh, a desktop computer for dad for the studio um and that's it's an apple mac it's a it's a mac desktop and um we are you know we're being wise with our funds you know we are making sure that we're not just going out and buying the biggest best thing because we have the money we're trying to make sure that we can you know stretch that dollar and milk it for all it's worth but um it's definitely not not you know cheap talk has gotten better because funds have come um i'm able to you know using Streamyard. you know when i interview somebody like steve soccer or jeff borshu it's pretty no um people like that when we bring people on stream that's a 25 dollar you know software um you know we have to pull we have to buy our stickers and our cigar rests and things like that we don't have to buy our shirts because teespring does all that we just get a profit off of that um so we have to put our money into those those things obviously we make more money back by by selling them or you know giving them to our page our 20 dollar patreon supporters 
Um, again, super shout out to the ones who are twenty dollars Patreon supporters and haven't killed me because I haven't gotten my gifts out on time. Um, who would want to do that? But again, it, it comes to it does it it's you know I, we've talked about this and Tony you you hit it right on the head it's it's not as cheap to do this kind of stuff as a lot of people think it is and yeah. uh, I think if Dad and I would have known how much we were going to spend on things that we've spent um, we might have not gotten into it uh, because we would have been like there's no way we ever would have been able to to get to that point which when we look at our subscriber numbers. We're, we're about to hit 4,000 subscribers, and we, when when Dad started, he didn't think he'd hit 100. I thought he'd hit 1,000, but I thought he'd plateau at it. We're at 4,000, so. So just want to put it out there. For those people who doesn't know, you don't always have to contribute with monetary value. So some people is like, you know what? I can't oh, support with not. money, blah, blah, blah. But simply watching the show helps them. Click a like and subscribe helps them, and that costs you nothing. All right, it takes you a split second to click like. Even if you watch on TV, you can click like. Okay, so those people who watch those shows think that I oh, you know what I'm not gonna I'm not gonna put dollars in it. That's fine. That's fine. If you enjoy the show, click like. Watch the show. It it does help. Look, every little penny yeah. helps when it comes to it. Because a lot of people and, and at the end, thing. at the end, like when our first year or second year, they're close to one thousand dollar with the equipment here and there. So you know, especially let's say, let's just. Talk about the studio, which is not costing you guys anything right now, because it's just the frame, all the use, the the money that we, everybody raised. Spray phones are expensive. Okay. It is, and and other things you have to think of are like, you know, when, as soon as the power goes out there, that bill now gets put on the Bob the Cigar Guy, you know, account. Um, and then when our internet bill, we're gonna have internet out there. We're not gonna use the internet that our mom and dad have at their house. We're gonna actually have a dedicated. Uh, internet provider for the studio so that we can have our own dedicated Wi-Fi and dedicated wired for computers there um, So again, it it just kind of gets lost in you know You have these things that add up and ultimately, you know, we're super thankful for the people who you know have bought stuff But you don't ever have to we, we don't ever we hope that we've never made anybody feel like they have to buy our stuff and ultimately if you never buy a thing but you just show up and you have a good time. That's all we're looking for. We just want to spread love. We want to have that family environment because that's what we feel. This is, that's what, and I can only speak for, truly for myself. And, and Dad co-signs most of everything that I say. Um, but you know, the biggest thing is 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 we want to create a, a community that you don't have to worry about coming in and worrying about a bunch of drama. There are too many people out there in the cigar community doing videos and podcasts and Facebook pages that are set up to divide and create problems and things like that. And in the Bob the Cigar Guy channel, we try to be as close to neutral about everything as possible. We have opinions and, you know, we will answer questions about opinions um, if asked, but we don't ever want to feel like we're shoving down something down somebody's throat that, that they don't particularly want to hear or or come to subscribe for. I think Chief just talked to me. Talk <laughs> Anyways, hey, so Chief, I did wa I did watch one of your uh, videos that I wasn't able to be a part of, and I heard you give me a shout out for the same cutter that you used. Yeah, I My talked man. about it on Chief Talk Thursday. Um, Travis Acord said he was looking to buy uh, an SD cutter, and I said that he needed to get the uh, the rose gold and, and black to to be the the triplets. We could be triplets. Hey, what about me? Yeah, I've been using this forever. Oh, look at that! Oh there. shit. It could be quite now. I don't have mine because mine actually stays at the studio. I, I've actually um, transitioned a lot of the stuff that I keep here at my house um, at the studio now. So cutters, lighters, and, and cigars, and all that stuff. I have stuff here at the house so that I can enjoy cigars here. But um, yeah, that that one's dedicated to Chief Talk, so it's actually at Chief. It's at the studio right now. I don't have it, so I feel like a poser right now. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> There was a post about, you know, I'd be like Hashimoto because he posted his lighter and the cutter. And how and, and then I'd be like Hashimoto and Tony. And I remember the guys like who was on that post that says Tony doesn't have that particular lighter Hashimoto was using. So I was like, you know what, you can be like Tony, we use Davidovs. <laughs> oh yeah. You had the ST DuPont. <laughs> That's right. What I use. 
anyway, so yeah, I mean, that was good. Everybody, and, and I'll set, you know, so a lot of people just don't understand how much it costs behind the scene, you know, because people thought, we're just watching the video, you're making tons of money. No, we don't. We I really don't. <laughs> Most people don't. Even with a sponsorship, you'll be surprised how little money that is, okay? How little money that is, how much work it takes. Uh, if you never edit video before, go ahead and make a 15 minute video for yourself, edit it. All right. When you have a 15 minute video, you've been doing that video for about an hour and a half. <laughs> and then you probably spend another two and a half hour editing it, listen to yourself. That will drive you crazy to listen to yourself, okay? I make that opening where the shadow, everybody's saying Shadow Smokes Legion. I listen to Shadow Smokes Legion, the word Shadow Smokes Legion, at least 1500 times just to put it together, okay? <laughs> Even my wife's like, why are you listen to Shallow Smokes Lean so much? It's like, well, it's a good word, but I'm going to listen to it to put it together. So there's a lot of work behind the scenes. So yeah, support this channel. Just simply click like and subscribe works, okay? Now, Steven, everybody is allowed two shameless plugins in uh, shameless, shameless plugs in my show. So, you know, here you go. Hey, man, I, I don't want to I don't want to take any kind of plug because you guys, you know, you guys know who we are and you guys are, are so faithful to continue to watch and, and support and, and just be there and create a family. So, but here's the thing, there, there are some people that stumble around here and just like, what the hell is this? And sometimes they might be able to find better channels. Okay, I'm just saying. So, I mean, if, if you don't know who I am, um, I'm sorry that you now know who I am. But um, if you don't know who I am or you don't know who Bob the Cigar Guy is, uh, we run a YouTube channel called Bob the Cigar Guy. Uh, I do a one a one night of show on every Thursday uh, of the week unless there's something else or sometimes we have some some impromptu shows where we'll get a guest on like we had Freddie No and Jeff Borchewitz on a couple Tuesday nights ago um, and so I do a, a show called Chief Talk on the Bob Cigar Guy YouTube channel it runs about two hours sometimes over sometimes just under and um, it's not a cigar review it's just a time to, to get on hang out talk about the, the cigar community the cigar lifestyle and anything that's going on, relatively anything that's going on in, in the culture of, of cigar smoking. There you go. Simply search Bob the Cigar Guy on YouTube. You'll find it because he's been doing that. Uh, Bob the Cigar Guy has been doing videos like forever. Like when I was a baby. Like when I was still in my mother's womb. She's, he's been doing videos. So you'll be able to find it. Those, those pre YouTube videos I'll, 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 I'll up there. Just search for it. Just search for it. So yeah. So yeah, we, we, you know, that's rare because for, 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 for Chief to join our show, this is like the first time. I think that's the first time that Chief actually go on the screen on our show. Yes, it is. Yeah. I'm sorry, Chief. <laughs> I'm, 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 completely, I'm completely humbled to, to be able to have been invited on and just hang on. Like I said, you know, it's with, with two kids and, and things like that, it's sometimes hard to find a little bit of time to, to sit back and relax. Um, and just enjoy cigars. And my my thing is, is I like to enjoy cigars with other people. And um, so I just had that. I, I don't smoke Lanceros often, but I just had Steve Saka's Lancero that now leave me the hell alone. And I'm now lighting up a Undercrown Maduro from Drew Estate. Um, and I'm using nice. my, in honor of, of Tony, I'm using a Soft Flame. This is also from Kaluki. Um This is the Soft Flame Julius. Nice. Nice, nice. See, when it comes to cutter and, and, and lighters, it's always personal opinion. That's personal preference too, right? Like, because all, all the flame is going to light your cigar, right? So long as you're, you have a flame somewhere, you can light your cigar. So it's, it's preference, right? And when it, cut it, uh, it when it comes to cutter too, I mean, is this actually better cutter than any other cutter? No, but I prefer to use this because it has a weight. Like, you know, if you guys use this, you will know this has some serious weight, right? It, it feel yep. solid. It feels solid. But is it does it cut any better than any all the other cutter out there? Probably not. There is gotta be better one. Or if you want to, you know, do a mortgage and buy some of those cutters, you can. <laughs> I don't know that deep. Yeah, I would beat. say within reason. Right. That deep V, buddy. That's where it's I at. Think, yeah, no. If you put a if you put a Calibri uh, deep V up saying. against the uh, right, James XO. You put a. <laughs> <laughs> If you put a Calibri or a Zycar up against, you know, your cigar shop's $2 cutter, you're definitely going to see a difference. But when it comes to, you know, Calibri and Zycar, it's more about, like, which brand you're going with or whoever gave it to you. 
Um, you know, I'm, there's not much different in punches, but here I've got a, a three punch, you know, cigar cutter from, from Kalupi. Um, now, if you like to mix and match your stuff and, you know, make your cutter match your lighter and your, your humidor, your ashtray, Calibri's got a, the whole entire Quasar series. Um, so it's cool. It makes it look cool. But, no, Tony's right. Hey, whatever cuts and whatever lights, that's whatever you're doing. You know, I'm down with that. Just don't light it on the kerosene fire. Yeah, well, <laughs> if, if you go out there and say, you know, one of those $1 cigar cutter from your local cigar shop, it's got to cut better than this thing. Uh, get out. <laughs> right? Just don't even bother. Okay. The thing is that I'm talking about in terms of the same caliber of price. Like you know, if you say one thirty dollar cutter is got a cut better than the other thirty cutter, is you know it might just be a personal preference. They, you know, a good cutter is got a cut. You know, and then the difference really I just agree. how much time I they agree. take to sharpen the, the blades and you know all that stuff. They all got a cut. In fact, if you go to certain areas where they don't even use cutter they just rip the, the, the cap off and just smoke it or just chew the cap off and smoke it you know you can smoke cigar it's not that complicated when you buy something like this it's because you enjoy smoking it. you enjoy using this not because it's any better than anything else at the same price right in my opinion that is. i agree i agree i agree with that so let me see this is uh, uh i'm just reading the chat room uh, True Estate stuff, a Corona cigar on the way, waiting for the mail. Uh, I'm so excited for Mike that came in. Drink uh, Knob Creek on Jeff tonight. Jeff, which Jeff? Anyways, so uh, since, since, since Chief is a big fan of True Estate, and I, I think there's like, you know, I know Travis is also a big fan of True Estate, right? So aside, aside from your favorite cigar. Let's take away your favorite cigar from that brand. All right. So, what what is your favorite cigar from from uh, Do Estate? Just one. Um, favorite favorite cigar from Drew Estate, just like flavor wise, not taking into comparison, because I answered that question in two ways. But I'll I'll just answer it. Favorite cigar is the L Forty. Okay. So let's take that one away from this question. Okay. okay? What makes you become a fan of Drew Estate? So my my biggest thing with Drew Estate has, has always been just the, the way that they conduct themselves in person. Um, you know, they're always they're always so so kind for the most part, so kind to deal with you on the internet. But as as we've all experienced and known, you can be one person on the internet, and you can be a completely different person in real life. Um, and so we've been able to actually go to Drew Estate events at Cigar Lounges with our, our local rep, Wilmington Um, But because we've been to Louisiana Barn Smoker, Florida Barn Smoker, and the Kentucky Barn Smoker, we've actually gotten to see those reps as well. Um, but we've established relationships with people who get to work, who do work in the office. You know, we got, we've met Johnny, or Jonathan Drew, you know, Fabian Ziegler when was, he was with Drew Estate. Um, and it's just the, the, the environment and the atmosphere that they have created um in their brand they're not they're not you know there's not in my opinion in my dealings um and again you have to take it with a grain of salt because i you know i am sponsored by drew estate and that doesn't affect you know me talking good or bad about them but just the way that they've dealt with me has always been super positive has always been um super professional but i just feel like they're a super family oriented type business um and so even if my favorite cigar in the world wasn't a Drew Estate cigar, Drew Estate is my favorite company just because of the way they've conducted themselves in person with me. Okay. Okay. So what's now you have heard my initial rant about the whole issue with Drew Estate cigars and Corona. What do you think? Mm -hmm. uh, what, what, what's your personal opinion about that messed up? So I, I didn't get to catch the whole entire mix up. Um, I, I caught a tail end of it. I know this. Um, Jeff Borshowitz, as Jeff Borshowitz himself, I, I can't speak for anybody else who works for Corona Cigar because I haven't dealt with everybody personally from Corona Cigar, but I've dealt with Jeff. I've, I've talked with Jeff in person. I email Jeff uh, on a weekly basis. Um, Jeff is somebody who, if if it needs to be taken care of, he'll take care of it. Um, I, and you can talk directly to Travis and Brittany Acord because they had a situation where she was trying to surprise Travis with for a birthday gift last week um, or the week before. And um, Jeff, she had some confusion and 
she was able to get direct to Jeff Borshowitz, and Jeff Borshowitz took care of it for them. Um, and then with Drew Estate, uh, Jack Hire and Joe Grow and Ryan Gallimore ha are always, um, whenever they're tagged in something on Facebook or emailed directly, they're always quick to try to make those situations right. Um, and a lot of times, they'll, they'll not only just make it right, they'll go above and beyond and, and make sure that you get not what you were supposed to get, but you'll also get something extra um, with what you were supposed to get. Because uh, you've, you've had people who who won something on the Drew Diplomat, and it didn't arrive, or it's taken so long to arrive, or it arrived broken. And so Drew Estate not only sends you what you were supposed to get, but also sends you something else and saying, you know what, sorry, our bad, and here's a token of, of peace. Um, so my thing is, 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 you know, if you've got a problem, if, if something has happened with Corona Cigar or something has happened with Drew Estate, you know, it, it's always easier to just go straight to the source instead of doing any kind of runaround. Again, I'm not completely familiar with the situation, um, but I, I would just say, if you've got a problem with Drew Estate, reach out to Jack Hire or Joe Grow. If you have a problem with Corona Cigar, reach out to Jeff Borshowitz or Tanya Borshowitz, his wife. Um, and if you... I've never had a problem getting in touch with them, um, and that's just my opinion. And again, you can ask Brittany and Travis Acor because they were they. I talked with them just the other night, and they said that there was a, an issue with trying to order something, and Jeff Borshowitz got on the phone with them and 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 walked them through it and helped them out. So just so just so, yeah, just so just everybody's the, clear, yeah. I have the show right now. Jeff, I'm waiting for your call. Okay. <laughs> Jeff, Jeff's an outstanding dude, man. He, he's helped me. Have out. I told you don't have those guys on speed down, Tony? I don't. I only have Davidoff. <laughs> <laughs> I thought everybody had those guys on speed down. The people well, don't return I mean, my calls, have, okay? <laughs> if, you, if you have Davidoff on speed dial, then you're not that far away from Jeff Borchers because Jeff Bor Corona Cigar has a Davidoff store. Uh, see, yep. that's the thing. I, and nobody ever calls me. Nobody returns my phone calls either. So. I mean... <laughs> I think Davidoff has one or two, or maybe even more than that, cigars with the Florida Sun Grown Tobacco for Jeff Borshowitz and Corona Cigar. So. I, w I wouldn't be surprised. Yeah. I, I do I do see that Corona Cigar does carry Davidoffs, but you know I buy mm -hmm. Davidoffs directly well, from Davidoff. So usual case. Their Tampa location is a Davidoff is a Davidoff store. Just so just so you know, if Jeff ever watched this, Jeff, I'm waiting for your phone. All right. All right. <laughs> Any of these people have my number. <laughs> So let's talk about everybody's favorite brand. Let's talk about Matt. Matt is which one is your favorite brand? Excluding your favorite cigar, which one is your favorite brand? Matt, which Matt? Matt Achibuchu. <laughs> <laughs> Have I been pronouncing it wrong? No. <laughs> yeah, <you do>. <laughs> <laughs> I'm with Chief, man. I'm, I'm a big Drew Estate fan, man. I, I'm a Pappy Van Winkle fan, Reserve all the way, man. That's my all-time favorite, favorite, number one cigar. All right, we're going to mute Matt now. <laughs> <laughs> Matt, we'll go start our own room. <laughs> right? <laughs> what about, what about, like, Josh? Josh, you haven't talked for a little bit. What, what, what's your favorite brand? Excluding um, your favorite cigar. I'd have to say Ashton. Ashton? My favorite cigar is Ashton BSG. Here's the thing, though. We don't talk about Ashton a lot. I mean, Ashton, to a lot of people, are beginner cigars, right? Like you agree, a lot of beginner goes to Ashton first, right? So a lot of people, as they move on to more of a boutique cigar, they forget about the, the heritage line cigars, like the normal cigars, and they don't usually go with Ashton. So what is, what what, again, ex excluding your favorite cigar, right? What attracts you? What 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 about that brand that attracts you by the cigar? Um, I'd say the construction and consistency. Okay. I haven't ever had a bad Ashton cigar. Okay, so that didn't really help. Next. <laughs> <laughs> okay, we have uh, we have Shane Dean that says McAuliffe is his favorite cigar. I know uh, 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 Martina Maya did a few did a McAuliffe uh, cigar review recently. So it's it's definitely another cigar brand that wasn't talked about a lot, right? Wasn't talked about a lot. Let's talk about let's how about Sherry. Sherry, what's your favorite brand? Myself. Um, I would have to go with Casa Cuevas. I think. Which one? I love this. Casa Cuevas. Casa Cuevas. Yeah. Of course. Of course. I like their 
price point. I like their construction and, and the fa- the whole family thing with them. You know, it's a family business and they're very they seem to be very upstanding people from what I can gather. So here's the and I, I think, enjoy their cigar. I think a lot of cigar company are actually family business, no? I, I like their story. Uh, we're gonna skip Michael because I know what his answer is. I'm just not gonna bother with him. What the hell? <laughs> <laughs> what's my what's my answer then? Espinosa or Casa Cueva, either one of them. Gurkha. <laughs> you weren't wrong, it's Casa Cueva. Exactly. I don't even need to go there. We don't even need to go there. Okay, let's, let's move on to the next one. Je- uh, Jim, James, what? <laughs> James, what's your favorite Dun- brand? Dunbarton Tobacco and Trust. Ooh, oh, I'm with you. Okay, okay. That's a different answer. Why? Because I really love the flavors of everything I've smoked from them. And I love the construction and the burn. It's just an enjoyable cigars all the way to the nose. Again, didn't help. All right, moving on <laughs> next person. <laughs> let's talk about... Let's, uh, Travis probably gotta be a Drew Estate as well, but Travis. Yep. Yep. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Drew Estate, because Pappy Van Winkle is, oh, probably my number one, maybe number two cigar, because I had the Davidoff Florida selection, and uh, that was a great cigar. Oh, it's so good. Wait, did you just say it wasn't so great, the Florida one? Uh huh. I'm disappointed. (laughs) I thought you actually liked the the, the Florida one. That's three to one or three to. One. All right, all right. Let's see. Let's see if Martin will give us a different answer. Martin, we know Martin's giving a different answer. I know Martin. Well, man. You already mentioned it. it's uh, it's McCallum cigars. Okay, okay. So we have two Casa Cuevas. We have what three Drew Estate. And I mean, there, there's a good reason why Drew Estate is so popular in the cigar, in the American cigar world, right? I mean, the, everybody yeah. knows about Drew Estate. The, the, I have to say the app sucks. They need to they need to fix that app, okay? <laughs> the app sucks. <laughs> Nothing yeah. against them, they, it's the, their programmer. They need to fix that app. Uh, something's wrong. I don't even know how to use that app. I'm a nerd. So, you know, here I it, use it. it. I, like, I don't, I don't know what to do with that app, so. Win stuff. Right. I but never won anything from Drew Estate, so I don't know. Okay. Literally I almost didn't win anything in my life. So that 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 should tell you. That should tell you. Okay. So who you else did we miss? Huh? I said you won your wife. <laughs> so we uh, Martin and I said the same thing. We're, you're married. <laughs> I didn't win my wife, I bought my wife. I went to wife Whoa. shopping, remember? <laughs> Whoa, dude, shots fired, bro. Good thing you ain't watching. I mean, this is literally the Asian culture, okay? Before you, you can date your wife, you can fall in love with your wife, but before you buy your wife, she's not yours, okay? <laughs> it, was, it was an arranged marriage, guys. Yeah, you can be engaged until the parent says you put, you put enough money on their hands, you haven't, you haven't owned your wife yet. There you go, okay? Nothing. <laughs> Praise the Lord for South Carolina culture. Right? You, first, you gotta go, okay, uh, uh, to have your wife. Do I buy your house first or do I buy your car first? Or do I have to do both together? You know, one of those things, okay? Uh, Shane, Dean or says, or <laughs> Shane Dean says, Shane Dean says, you guys have uh, have to give McKellar a try. I've never had a bad McKellar. I tried McKellar. They're not bad. They're not bad. However, Same. McKellar is not a, a brand that everywhere sells. That's number one. It's right. pretty hard to ha- find unless you buy yeah, online. They're... And number two is- They're very, very hard to find. Yeah. And, and number two is for people who never tried it before. But Caleb is not a cheap cigar. Either. All right, so this this right. is why. But however, if your local shop does carry it, give it a try because uh, it's it's probably the best way to try McCallum is to actually see it, touch it, smoke it, rather than buy it online and go. That's not the one I like. You know, go with the go with the shop. Uh, you know, ask for for recommendation. Unless the the shop is pushing for another cigar, they usually give you quite honest of uh, uh, recommendation. Like and, if your shop can take my word for it because everybody knows I don't like anything, so <laughs> <laughs> that's what I was gonna say. Wait, Martin, so you don't like San Andreas? You don't like San Andreas cigars? Really? 
I thought you loved San Andreas a lot, Robert. See, I mean, I, I, I don't have a favorite McAllister. It's just everything that I've had has been excellent from them. I mean, I've had top cigars like the Punch Egg Roll. I thought was fantastic. Uh, there was a Padilla that I smoked that was freaking awesome. But for McAllister, for McAllister, everything is just so good. I've never had any problems as far as the construction, the draw, anything. It's just a very good cigar. It's like for me with you, or it's like with you for Davidoff's. It's like with me for McAllister. You always go back to McAllister, and you can always expect to have a good cigar. Oh, for my Davidov also, it's not just the cigar itself. And I, I mean, granted, I have good, good Davidov, good draw, good construction, good flavor. It's the, it's the service that Davidov provided to me that I was satisfied with. You guys know that if somebody give me bad service, regardless how good the cigar is, I will bitch about it. Right? So, uh, you know, you guys know that. You guys know that. That's my inner Karen somewhere. Somewhere. Okay? So, I, I do complain about service all the time. I mean, cigar itself, if I don't like it, I don't like it. You know, somebody else can like it. But when it comes to service, that's 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 number one issue. That's number one issue. So we'll see what Corona uh, Corona do for my 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 uh, my stuff this time. Which McAuliffe have you had, Tony? I actually don't know. Somebody sent it to me. I tried. Okay. Some somewhere in the 100th anniversary uh, 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 episode, somewhere maybe 50 or 70, I I, I review one of those. I can't remember. I only try one, got one McAuliffe. Cigar. I've got one shop that carries McAuliffe near me, so next time I'm in there, I'll grab a few, a few things to send to you. Uh, they are hard to find, and they are not cheap, but I can get them in San Antonio. Just reach out to me, I'll get them. It's, 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 yeah. it's all good. It's all good. I'm just saying for those people who haven't tried it yet. It, it is a good cigar. Here's the thing, though. A lot of cigars has the same quality that we all enjoy, right? It's always construction, draw, right? Burns are uh, iffy. We would usually give them a pass on the burn. Right? If you have one cigar that burns bad, it might be just that one cigar. Not if I spend a bunch of money. <laughs> um, if I spend $35 on the cigar and it burns like like a, a factory smoke, <laughs> group, they, I'm going to be pissed. I've never had a Davidoff that burns bad. I okay. had a Padron. I had two Padrones that burned bad. Padron is Ooh. one brand I don't buy because everything's inconsistent. Color is inconsistent. Uh, the wrapper is incon inconsistent and the, the burn and draw is inconsistent for me so yeah, 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 you know shane dean says I, it was him that sent me the mata fina so there we go now you know which one it is okay so the mata fina was the one you smoked that that's an excellent cigar yeah it was good it was good it, it was uh it was a good try actually so, so i know what not to send you <laughs> <laughs> so when it comes to cigar it's all personal preference Right, so you can have the worst of the worst cigar out there. There is a market for it. Someone bought it. That's why they're out there, right? I I I, I might not like Gurkha. A lot of people don't like Gurkha. There's still a huge market for Gurkha. So many Asian buys Gurkha. I don't even know why. So speaking of Gurkha, did anybody see that post that Gurkha, the owner of Gurkha, did uh, for the Black Lives Matter thing? No. Yeah, I seen I did that. I didn't see what he posted, but I seen where they have, they have set his account back. Man, that was not good. Wait, what did he do? I I, I don't want to quote it because I'm not going to quote it 100% because I don't remember exactly how he put it, but it... Give me a gist of it. Not, Give me a gist of it. Give me huh? a gist of it. Uh, it was over the on. line insensitive. That That's probably the, the most politically correct... Towards, to, towards to, the protest or towards the lives. I, I can't. Stephen might remember better than me, so I'll let Steve take it. <laughs> um, it was just, and I'm not sure if it was something that was recent or it was something that he had posted, you know, a, a while ago. Um, but there were two photos that surfaced from his Instagram account and Facebook account that were, if they were satire, it was in very, very poor taste. Um. But it just, it was very insensitive. Uh, again, it, it could have been posts that are, that are old. Um, they're, they're not taken out of context because they're very straightforward, you know, talking about, you know, the things that are, you know, racially charged in American culture. But um, it, it was not a good look, that's for sure. Okay. Well, they said he was hacked. Gurkha released a... Uh, Everybody a always said they were hacked, though. Said he was hacked. Said Whenever you post something bad. Apologize for it. 
if we, if, whenever you post something bad, it's always my account got hacked. This is, this is like number one <laughs> excuse. All right, number one excuse. But you know, for me, what I see recently is all about like funding the police, which I did not, I did not particularly support because that's like you know, you got one bad guy, you want to defund the entire uh, you know entity. That's kind of eh. So I, it's good that the government are taking control of it, that they are taking action. Which is good. I mean, that means protest, protest work. All right. So stop looting and polluting. Okay. Captain Planet say so. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I watched that growing up. <laughs> I still don't understand why the fifth element. Is did hard. they have TV when you grew up, Travis? Yeah, they did. It, <laughs> oh. <laughs> we were, twist, were twisting knobs, though. We were twisting knobs in the, the the original house I grew up in. We had the old antenna, oh, the old knobs. Yeah. I'm surprised nobody posted the rabbit ear. Everybody posted the knob. Yeah. Because I remember <laughs> when I was young, I didn't know what it's for. So I actually break off people's um, little antenna. So it's like, it looks like a, like a aluminum pipe thingy with multiple, like six different fins coming out. And I'll go snap one of few of those down. People won't be able to watch TV after that. Yeah, but Tony's, Tony's 200 years old, though, so he, he remembers when TV came out. <laughs> I remember only three channels, okay? All we have is three channels. And all three channels had the news at the same time, too. Yeah, you, you used to just, like, like a single antenna coming like this, and it has fins coming, like, another rack of different stick coming out, and then you can just snap it, and, like, really light material and used for antenna like you know, most people, like the way chinese houses are set up everything's concrete so it's hard to go through signals and stuff like that so everybody had a long antenna on top of it. and i'll go to the roof and yeah. snap <laughs> when i was young because right? i didn't know what they are take Looks it like down and it, like... but yeah but i, I remember um after they uh, snapped those they can't watch tv anymore they would use a hanger and break a hanger apart and make it into a rabbit ear <laughs> somebody will just utilize aluminum foil. Yeah, somebody will right. just hold it and then you know the TV will like oh, oh, go left a little bit, go left a little bit. No, oh, actually he passed it, come back just pass. okay, we can watch TV now. Hold it right there, kid. Okay. So the yeah, toy assassin started off life as a vandal, huh? <laughs> We all do stupid stuff when we're young. Come on. I I don't think anybody here in the stream can tell me that you didn't do something stupid like that when you're young. Nope. No, no comment. Oh, no comment. <laughs> <laughs> Shane Dean says, I remember party lines for telephones. You and your neighbor shared a, a phone line. Yep. What? Yep. I, I remember rotary phone, and that's one of my favorite kind of phone. I, I love to turn the thing. Da -da 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 -da. So if you dial like a number, with, any number with nines, it'll, for, it'll take forever to dial that number. <laughs> <laughs> Especially when you try to dial into the radio station. <laughs> You'll never get on time. You'll never get on time. Right. <laughs> what what yeah. disappoint me yeah. is that we don't we, we use digital phones now. With none of those phones, even if you get it, works anymore. You cannot use that phone anymore. Even if you plug it in. Which is kind of see, James is older than rotary phones. He actually had to call the switchboard and see if they could connect them. Yeah, the lady's <laughs> like oh. <laughs> that looks being <being> mean. <laughs> <laughs> it, it's, it's not mean if it's true oh <laughs> that's how i met my first two girlfriends you know Switch what happens. send him a telegram <laughs> see tony's so old he used to just write notes and send it on a pigeon oh <laughs> smoke signals <laughs> yeah burn them like the yellow flame okay Jason Martin says, uh, me too, Shane. I remember when we only had one area code. I only had to dial five digits to make a call. We always have, wow. we all have seven digits. Taiwan now has eight digit phone numbers plus two digit or three digit area. So people has- We always had seven digit phones, but we never had to dial more than, we never had to dial an area code with it. I remember for a while we all had to dial, we all, we all, we, all, we don't have to dial area code if it's local. But now we all had to dial area code even if it's local. Yep. So, yeah. Yeah. But you know, you know how funny how like technology grows so much in the '90s and the 2000s. Like you know, all of a sudden, everybody's like TVs and you know, back in the days like '90s, 
rarely everybody had I remember when I was six years old people still come to my house to watch TV and our TV is smaller than any of these monitor size in front of me they're tiny and they're black and white and only three channels I don't know how I lived through that time okay I don't know how I lived through that time because now we have like 2,000 channel in our house and we don't we only watch two channels anyway but still three channels how do we live that how do we go through that even you didn't know the digital i mean you don't have to click the the bad thing wasn't about that there was only there was a knob with 80 something channels on the knob but only like five channels it's like one and 15 and 33 <laughs> and, and you always have to click 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 yeah. <laughs> And so you, you had to get up off the sofa and go actually turn the knob on the television every time yep. you wanted to change channels. And I remember Not back in the forward. days we had to we had to judo chop the TV when it doesn't work. Now you try to judo chop your TV, you'll cry. <laughs> yeah, and you, you had to try to take filters off so you could get free channels. Yeah, I remember that yeah. when I was in high school. Oh yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> get the it block box. <laughs> get the block box. <laughs> You actually took the TV guide and looked to see what was on and say, oh, I like that. And then you go turn the knob to the number you want. Do they still even have that anymore? The, those book TV guys? Yeah, they do. They do? In South Carolina, we do, yeah. Really? No you guys way. still have TV guide no booklets? Way. I remember those. I never read those. They're, those are like to prop up my table and stuff. <laughs> <laughs> I haven't seen a TV guide. I never had a table that I had to prop up with a TV guide, so. What did you prop with? The phone book? I didn't prop up any of my legs. <laughs> That's a bad table if you gotta use a phone book to balance it. <laughs> Stack of pizza boxes. Yeah. Pizza boxes. Hey, Save back in the day, eating legs, pizza was a luxury. Okay, I remember my time eating pizza was a luxury. Eating McDonald's was a luxury. Okay. Oh, um, yeah. Yeah. Now, it's hard to stack things on packs of ramen. <laughs> 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 That's not true. Have you seen people fixing like toilets and stuff and table using ramen? You can use ramen for everything. Oh, you have never seen it? You guys have never seen it. I've seen those and here's the thing. If you actually pay good enough attention to those things, they get it really close to looking like the final project and then it looks exactly like it. No, what they do is they take uh, their first video they take is actually their final video. So they have this beautiful toilet and they take a video of this toilet and it looks like it's finished then they break it then they do their malarkey with now let me back. tell you okay some of those are actually legit because they sell it in fleet market in china they actually tell you it was fixed, fixed with ramen yeah i seen a guitar that was made with ramen they made a, a guitar and coated it in <laughs> i guess lacquer resin they made a they made a stratocaster out of ramen it's not oh worth God. the time though it's not worth the time to fix with ramen because the <laughs> amount of time you had to send that thing your arm will fall off Ramen's a delicacy in South Carolina, so we don't we don't waste it. <laughs> <laughs> Martina Maya's hot ramen challenge. Yep. I can't believe it. Hey, I, mean, I, I, wanna, I, I wonder know. where Martin got that idea. <laughs> yeah, it was on his life. I won't let James or Michael take this one. <laughs> Use it wisely, only two. Oh, look at those two people. They have smoke down to the what? Down to Almost. the nub. There you go. There we go. 3 a.m. 6. No, 3 a.m. Pacific time. Oh, you guys fuck that up, man. Oh, you guys screw that up. Big time. Big time. Shame on you. After doing it this for like four weeks and you guys still screwed it up, come on. Yeah. <laughs> hey, going back no, to the whole TV thing. 3 p.m. 3 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. <laughs> No, it's 6 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, but yeah, that six, works. Six, yeah, 6 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, yeah. Yeah, we're, we're talking about our time, not your time, James. <laughs> yeah, I get it's just, just early in the morning. Did you say our time or old time, or James? Our, what, what? our time. The old time. <laughs> <laughs> Let me get my AARP card. <laughs> so, Martin, yeah, what were you saying about the TV? Martin. Martin had to find that button to unmute himself. What were you saying about the TV? Going back to the TV? Oh, yeah, going back to the whole TV thing. I grew up in apartments, so back when cable TV you had to pay for, I would always go back to the boxes and connect the cable to my uh, apartment, and we get free TV or free cable TV. 
<laughs> yeah, I remember back in the days, if your neighbor has a TV, you can run a splitter and run to your TV. You won't have every single channel, but you have most of the channel. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And then oh, <laughs> Did you know Japan has a mandatory cable TV feed? Mandatory. Everybody is required to pay for it if you own a TV at all. Even if you don't watch TV. Some places in Texas are like that too. Right. If you own a TV that can watch TV at all, even if it's not connected to anything, you're mandatory to pay the fee and sign a contract with the <coughs> NHK TV station. And it, and that 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 is is uh, uh, one of those like citizen duty that you had to pay for. Even if you don't watch TV. So I know some people like when the when the guy comes <coughs> over and says, uh, we got a signal that you have TV at home. You need to pay for this. They they'll hide their TV before they open it. They will take off the TV, hide the TV into their bedroom. Because they can't enter your house, but if they can see it in plain sight that you have a TV, you had to pay for it. They make us do that. They used to make us do that years ago. People protested it, but when West Nile came out, they started spraying for skeeters, and then they wanted us to pay ninety dollars a month for them to spray, and everybody protested. It, so now they just do it for free. Wow, <laughs> ninety dollars a month. Yeah, That's spray, a lot just of money. Spray inches to push the mosquitoes back in your yard. That should be something government pays for, actually, if they want to control. Well, they do it. now because nobody paid it. They sent everybody past due notices, and we just said, well, too bad. So they quit. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Wow, that's horrible. That is horrible. So how's everybody's weather right now? I know there's, like, tornado warning and everything somewhere in the mid-USA. It's finally It's a little here. tropical here. It's fucking humid in Texas right now. I'm sweating balls. <laughs> Super cloudy. Super cloudy outside. How do you sweat balls? Maybe. Please, please, how do you sweat balls? <laughs> that got storm rolling in. I got I'm curious because I only have one, you know. <laughs> Shane, I'll talk to you later, Shane. <laughs> so, and I got to go too. I got to start the storm rolling in. Spare down. Yep. We right. got tropical storm Christo Light. ball hitting tomorrow. Wow, yeah, it's supposed to be a hurricane by tomorrow, but they named it Cristo Ball. Isn't that just fantastic? <laughs> I don't like the Josh are... ball. So I know... Josh are... It's raining here in Utah like crazy. Yeah, it's it's you're pouring outside, isn't it? Matt, you're outside, isn't it? Yeah, I'm outside on my deck, though. So there's no rain on your deck? No, it's covered. <laughs> oh, okay, here we go. Show off. <laughs> I'm sitting in the garage. So, anybody has, uh, you know, plans for July 4th? I know, like, you know, situations are bad right now, but, you know, do you guys have any plans for July 4th? Well, I, just to say this, I, I, on my way back from $400 worth of uh, mortars. $100 worth of mortars? Are oh, you going to build my deck? Is that what it is? <laughs> You gonna have another Asian guy come build your deck? God damn it! Yeah, I'll, you know <laughs> that's the thing about Asian guys when they hear there's uh, Corona, they actually just lock themselves at home. I, I had to go to Idaho for work, man. So I have to say, like you know, everybody is trying to call it COVID nineteen right now, especially China. But I think the people in China can't even pronounce COVID nineteen correctly, so I don't even know what Corona <laughs> is. Coronavirus. What is that? I don't know. <laughs> as far as uh, Fourth of July, I mean, I know what cigar I'm going to smoke. And every year here in Plano, we have this huge show up with like, um, like where you literally sit in a field, and we literally sit right up front to where you look up, and it looks like they are right there in front of you. But this year, we're probably just going to go to a lot where you can just drive off and just look at them from our car. You know, here, since we're on a video and then not much people are watching, just so in case everybody watches, if you are one of the protesters, do it right, right? Protest by sitting over there and social distancing yourself. I would love to see thousands of people six feet apart. Please do that. Okay? That'd be cool. <laughs> yeah. That, you know, how, how impressive would that be? Since we're doing this correctly, not only we're protesting, we're social distancing. Now, now that, hands down, is the right way to do it. I, I think that boat's already left. 
I hope that everything over it gets over by summer. Like I really want to go out and hang out in the summer, but uh, like, you know. I'm thinking yeah. about th about three weeks. You guys are gonna start seeing the, you know, you're gonna start reaping the the rewards from that protest <laughs> in about three weeks, three four weeks. The reward of the <laughs> protest. Like, yeah, all the, all, the, all the surge in coronavirus cases. You know. It, <laughs> With all these protests, my wife came go to New York because all the shops are smashed down to nothingness. So, I'm kind of happy about that. Guess I don't have to spend the money, but <laughs> but it's driving my wife crazy that she can't go shopping. So, not my fault. Not my fault. Fourth of Fourth of July here, we always with BMW they always shut down two weeks a year. They shut down one week for Fourth of July and they shut down one week for Christmas. And because of them shutting down the plant for my shift, day shift for a month, and then shutting down dad shift, the night shift for two months, um, they've taken away the the Fourth of July shutdown. So I actually put in vacation the first day I was back. Um, I couldn't put in vacation. I got mine approved. So um, that the first week, that Fourth of July week is like the last couple days of June, the first couple days of July. Every year we go down to. Where my wife is from uh, right near myrtle beach which is south carolina's most popular beach um but uh she's from a, a small town right outside of it and we always go down and hang out it's just a real country southern town slow town everybody's real I mean, it just takes life real slow there but um we always go down we go to the beach and we go fishing and uh fourth of july or a day around it um we go out to her aunt's house which is in the middle of nowhere and i light up a cigar uh i've lit up i lit up uh um, Happy Van Winkle two years ago and a little bit of an FSG last year. So this year I think I'm going to do, um, I don't know, it'll be something Drew Estate related, but I light the cigars, the mortar tubes with my, or I light the, the mortar tubes with my cigar. So it's it's like South Carolina dangerous, but it's fun. Last time, uh, last show we actually talked about this. We can ask uh, Steven, maybe he knows more. Is Kentucky Fire Cure considered as the flavor cigar? <clears throat> so Technically, it, it really depends on how their um, the, the the state or the government is, is writing it, or the shop is going to have to adhere to it. Because technically, um, Drew Estates infused cigars aren't flavored cigars. Flavored cigars are like Swisher and Backwoods and all those are actual flavored tobacco. Um, I know I was talking to. Um, a friend who who follows the Bob Cigar Guy channel, Adam Machado, um, and he lives up there um, in Massachusetts, I believe, and they're putting the big ban on flavored tobacco, and they're banning all acid tobacco and Kentucky Fire Cure tobacco. I was so, right, my team, my team, I was right. So it's, but I will say this: Drew Estates infused cigars are not flavored tobacco. They might have. They might have a sweetened tip, but it's not flavored tobacco. It's infused tobacco. But that covers anything on the acid line, uh, the Java line, um, the tobacco, the layer tan, or, or natural if you have old ones, uh, if shops have old ones. It also goes to the Kentucky Fire Cure line, uh, and it goes, because of Kentucky Fire Cure, that would go to the Pappy Van Winkle um, family here. Ooh, uh, yes, sir. Yeah. Because that cigar has Kentucky Fire Cure uh, wrapper. See, you see, and, and then if you want to use any flavor cigar in any of the store, you'll pay seventy-five percent tax on it. Okay. Yeah. We need to get we need to get Adam and SS Dell because I know he's he's in the entertainment business. He's been out of work, but he has a business where he make he etches things like he does coasters and all kind of etching stuff. So he, he may you know I think he'd enjoy the le Legion. And, he makes all kind of different things. He could make wag and stuff, and it'd be cool to have somebody in the Legion that does that. It'll be cool, but then they all, uh, the, if he, that's if he enjoys cigars and stuff. If he just joined the cigar group for merely engraving stuff, he wouldn't make sense for it. So. He, he's a cool guy, though. He really is. Like, we talk with him all the time on Chief Talk, and we had a three-way phone conversation, video chat with Chief the other night. Adam's a Real cool guy. He loves cigars. Real, real cool guy. I'm sure glad you said a three-way phone. I know, phone right? I was like, three-way what? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I was happy to hear that phone call. Yeah. 
You, you can tell because Sherry disappeared. <laughs> <laughs> oh, of course, God. we don't know what it was, you know, that kind of phone call. You know? <laughs> hey, we never disclosed whether we were wearing shirts or not. Whoa! Yeah. He did say it was. He did say it was a video call. <laughs> yeah, uh, three-way video calls. What was that song from I mean, Justin Timberlake? Get... It's three-way, but it's not what. <laughs> oh. <laughs> that so, was, was that. Just, that was Lonely Island, wasn't it? Yeah. Well, he, Justin Timberlake was in, in it, so. He was he was the singer yeah. in it with the Lonely Island. Hey, yeah. somebody knows what I'm talking about. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah. Uh, oh, yeah, I know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's not, it's so I just finished day. my drink, and I have one nasty drink I'm about to try. I don't know how nasty this is gonna be. It's this cream soda, Olivia. So I'm gonna try this. That's gonna be. I love cream soda. It's gonna be super nasty, in my opinion, because it's you know. Stevia sugar is not, you know, stevia sugar is never my flavor kind of sugar. I'm gonna drink it. I'm gonna let you guys know how, how it is. But with that, I should have another cigar here and there. Here it goes. I'm drinking perfect pear, baby. I'm lighting up a punch. Diablo. Ooh, this is nasty. I finished my last perfect pear. I gotta order another bag. I drank my last cup just a little bit ago. I need to order. Thanks, son. You blew through that bag. I'm telling you right now, I drank so much of it. I haven't slept since it came out. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I heard. I, mean, I talked to Bob about that that coffee. He took forever to work on that coffee. I thought, was that a six month, seven month time period? That's a long time to work on a coffee. Well, it, uh, yeah, close, close to six months. It well, really, it didn't like. Once we decided to fully commit to it, it didn't take long at all. Um, we had talked to Shad Bates at the Kentucky Barn Smoker last year. Um, and then after the Louisiana Barn Smoker, he messaged Dad and was like, Hey, I'd like to I'd like to maybe collab with you guys and do something. Um, and, and Dad said, Yeah, we'd love to do it. But we were kind of in the middle of you know starting the studio, and that took precedence. And then we had some other stuff come up. Um, and then we kind of dad dad and i talked like I, I i've always been trying to push to get it um dad was a little bit more hesitant to do it because he was like oh, nobody's gonna buy it nobody's gonna want any of it um but we got a shad sent us our reports from last month of how many bags were sold and it's blowing our mind um so it's good coffee and like i don't drink i've been drinking coffee black for the last two months because i'm trying to cut as much sweets and, and dairy as i can um but drinking that's what I'm drinking right now, perfect pair. Um and I was taking Instagram photos earlier, so I've got I've got another bag of it right here, but it's really good stuff to drink just straight black coffee. Now just so, just, so just to let everybody know, I the reason I didn't buy it is because I'm super picky about uh coffee and I don't wanna trash that coffee because I know it's probably good for most of the people. I just I'm, I'm super picky about coffee. <laughs> All right, Chief. So here's your second plug. Where can we buy this the uh, coffee? So you can um, you can go to Janice Coffee Roasters, um, their website, and then at the top you can go in the search. Um, it's actually kind of you can't just like click a tab and find it. If you go in the search and you type in Bob the Cigar Guy, it'll pull up. But if if you want to make it even easier on yourself, you, if you go to the Bob the Cigar Guy Instagram page, um, it's actually the link in the Instagram page. Okay. Miss Best Coffee. I mean, I don't say that about everything, but I, like I said, I blew through that entire bag. I went and bought a burr grinder. I drank every cup black, and I mean, it is just fantastic. Is it a we medium did roast taste. or a dark roast? It's a dark. The dark roast? Why is there not a link for it on the Bob the Chicago YouTube page? Say what? Why isn't there a link for it in the Bob Chicago YouTube page? Uh, if you go to, I mean, um, I think in some in the the videos he's been posting oh. lately, there is a link to it in the description. Um, now we don't have dedicated links set up on the Bob the Cigar Guy YouTube page. We've just never put any links there. Um, but also, if you go to Chief, any Chief Talk video in the last three weeks, it's in the description as well. But James, last time I checked, you can't send coffee beans to Germany. Well, I'm not worried about that. I was just saying a lot of people like me, maybe, that don't have an Instagram account that, you know, yeah. 
But but here's the thing though. That th this is why I this is why I'm, it's good that I didn't buy it because I'm not a dark rose guy. I, I definitely don't like dark coffee. Good thing I didn't buy it. But you know, I'm pretty sure it's gotta be a good coffee. But, you know, a, a lot of people drink it. Had a good feedback on it. Well, that... well, know this, know this. Let me let me put a little teaser out there for you. Um, the Bob the Cigar Guy blend is blend number one. So we. When you when you classify something as blend number one, that means you're most likely going to have blend two, three, four, five. So keep an eye out because uh, Chief's blend is going to come out eventually. Because I can oh, tell you that when I drink the Cigars hey. Daily blend, he had three blend. I trashed the other two. I literally tried the other two on one of the shows. So <laughs> that's like only one is good. The other one, eh. So. But yeah, it's pretty cool. Pretty cool. Now go from the guy reviewer to have your own copy line. That's Pretty cool. No, like that thing tastes like crap. Not having to drink. We're definitely not the first. Yeah, we're definitely not the first cigar channel to have um, our own dedicated coffee. But um, once we saw, once Dad saw how well Jesse Flores' this stuff was it was doing, we kind Dad kind of saw like, well, maybe there is going to be a, a group of people that that want to go out there and, and, and buy it. So we know Shad has bought a lot of um the beans necessary to roast so he's not going to run out of coffee for um the perfect pair um where's the bean from do you know? know uh tanzania okay yeah i got a bag of jesse's blend too and uh matter of fact Brittany's going to start doing the photo competition he's got going on with his blend uh tomorrow we're going to brew some up and give it a try if he's got to have a blend that's medium roasted with Ethiopian beans, let me know. <laughs> well, Jesse's blend is very light. Like, if you look at those beans compared to the perfect pear, it, it is a drastic difference in color. They're, those beans are so light brown where, where the perfect pear's beans are almost black. They're, they are black. I'm not, gonna, I'm not that's sure. That's because it's dark roasted. <laughs> I'll, I'll grab a, uh, a handful. I'm going to go grab yeah, Jesse's like... blend. I'll show you those beans. Hang on. Yeah, Cause they're dark roasted, so they gotta be dark. I mean, they're oily. I mean, they are just packed full of flavor. Oh my god! You're not gonna believe this. The moment that you took out those beans, I thought I smelled beans. I smell coffee beans. <laughs> I'm not kidding. Cause my mind is like, I know how coffee beans smells like. So when you hand over the beans, I start to think about coffee beans. I smell that coffee bean. Smell. This but, is uh, this is Jesse's plan. I'm about to pour some in my hand. This is Jesse's plant. If you can see the color of those beans. Okay. So they're, they're very, very light colored beans. Actually, saw that I still. This green. is his bag. They all go to support his his daughter. His daughter's having some medical problems, so the proceeds go to helping his daughter. If you buy this plant. There you go. One plug. <laughs> <laughs> dark roast. A lot of people like dark. I mean, dark roast gives you that really charred strong taste but here's the thing though just so everybody knows drinking a dark rose doesn't necessarily mean there's more caffeine in it okay so a lot of people think that because you drink dark rose there's more caffeine no there's pretty much if not less ca uh, caffeine the, in it uh, yeah on average there's a slight percentage less caffeine the more they roast it yeah so that's that's like a, a small useless knowledge <laughs> out there so josh i see you're I mean, done with your cigar Done. What's what's it gonna be the next one? That was the next one. That was the that next was, one. Uh, that was the first. Windwood Hills. What Arranged. about the next one? Oh. Yeah, buddy. Two's good for me. Ah. Uh, <laughs> Michael is gonna make fun of you. He used to be a one. Come on, man. You gotta too. get you gotta get like five six. Come on. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And I, we ran out of those. No. You run out of those? We ran out. out. Uh, there's plenty of places to refill those things nowadays. I actually just got my first Casa Cuevas um, from Kyle List. He sent me a, a care package for um, celebrating Ember's birth, and so I got a, a Casa Cuevas in, um, in the mail. It's the first one I've ever I've ever seen in person, so I'm I'm excited to try it. Oh, you haven't tried awesome. it yet? Okay, okay. I have not. Yeah, we can't find those in Utah either. Some some of us are actually waiting, you know, for a few weeks before we. We feel our classic wavelength. <laughs> true, true, true. 
I mean, Josh, uh, I'm pretty sure Matt has some Casa Cuevas, no? That was for Matt. Oh, that was for Matt? <laughs> <laughs> I'm a, we're all out, man. We are dry. Oh, my God. How can you let this happen? Oh, man. Well, Too bad Brendan's not on there. I will have, I will have given some trash on, over this. <laughs> <laughs> Brendan's not on. I can't give him trash on it. Damn it. Well, it's not and I had my Brandon, first happy due to Matt also. It's not Brandon's fault on this one. We know oh, it's definitely Brendan's fault. It's definitely Brendan's uh, fault. No, no. We, so we, we don't solve this. Either. Had Brendan go rap somewhere in Utah, that wouldn't be the problem, would it? He is here in Utah. Where? In Salt Lake, man. But the, the, they want twice as much for him there. Yeah, it's still their fault. It's still it's still Brendan's fault for not telling them to do a cheap. Well, they, 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 it's eighty six percent tax. Then you should get an eighty six percent discount, isn't it? <laughs> eighty six. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. yeah so, cigars are stupid. No, here's the thing: you cannot give a complete discount. If it's eighty six percent tax, drop it down to eighty percent, right? Uh, drop it, drop eighty percent. You still pay six percent tax. That's not too bad, okay? Yeah. <laughs> oh, that's that's crazy. Eighty six percent tax. Somebody should start a riot on that. Let's go, Matt. It's time to riot. <laughs> Just me and Josh. <laughs> two two protesters <laughs> staying in front of the cigar shop. Do that. Do that. So you'll see on the local news, me and Josh arrested. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Two crazy guys try to protest over over cigar prices. I'm pretty sure they're routing more people over that cigar tax, though. I wouldn't be surprised will, if, if that it will happened. do this right down to the nub. 3 p.m. <laughs> Sundays, 3 p.m. Uh, Pacific Standard Time, Sunday, 6 p.m. Uh, Eastern Time. He still screwed that up. He still screwed that up. <laughs> You still yeah, smooth out. I'm having too much drink. I'm having any drinks either. Yeah, yeah whatever. You still it's because he was on the spot. That's why. Nah. He, he's got all the time to prep for that too. Why he's silent? I don't know. <laughs> you, got, you guys got all kinds of crap going through my head here. Stop. <laughs> now it's our fault. Now it's our fault. Horrible, horrible, horrible. It's okay. We know we have a connection coming soon. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Is it? Oh yeah. <laughs> it is. It's soon. It'll be soon. 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 Soon is not fast enough. Hopefully it's sooner than I come down to Arizona and get my damn restock. <laughs> when, are, when are you going to be in Arizona? In the, uh, about three weeks. Ooh, it's uh, might be, might go hand in hand. We'll see. Might go hand in hand. Man. That's that's late, yo. That's late. Late. I may have to send you with some cash, Hashimoto. Smart <laughs> I don't accept cash. You know that, Josh. I know. <laughs> he take gold bricks. He take gold bricks. <laughs> I take toilet paper. <laughs> <laughs> there is one guy that actually tried to pay like McDonald's with toilet papers. Like he's like, oh, it's a dollar, and he just ripped a piece of the, like the toilet paper and gave oh, it to I me. Saw, I saw that. Yeah, it was like at Starbucks or something. The Starbucks one was Apple. I said, did you guys take Apple Pay? And then he gave him Apple. Like, out of his backpack. Give him Apple. <laughs> but he already, but in his app, uh, in his backpack, he already had the Apple Pay set up, ready to pay. <laughs> so he put the, the backpack towards the table and gave him Apple. He actually showed his pay. And the, the girl was like, no way. Yeah, he's all set. Three apples. Three big, nice apples. Apple Pay. <laughs> <laughs> Apple Pay, pay with Apple. Now I'm really out of drink. What? Damn it. Dang it. Dang it. All right. What could this Apple Pay do if, if people, you know, half the people aren't using Apple telephones? No, a lot of people are using Apple telephones. I know, but a whole lot of people aren't using Apple telephones. <laughs> yeah, they those not... people use Google Pay or Samsung Pay. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> they still use the same terminal, technically. It's just a, it's just a, 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 you know, a payment system. I don't, I'm not sure if anywhere takes explicitly Apple Pay. So if you don't have Apple Pay, you could use Samsung Pay or your regular cash or, or card. Yeah. I mean, most people go to Starbucks with Starbucks app anyway. Well, you guys are a little further along than they are over here in Germany. So. <laughs> 
Because in China, everybody uses WeChat. Everybody uses WeChat. So the government knows exactly how much money you spend. Or you have. <laughs> so, aside from all those, again, like we say, you know, there's only so much things to talk about cigars. Uh, so, at this point, we already went through 2 hours and 13, uh, 15 minutes, right? 2 hours and 15 minutes. We're going to wow. cut off on YouTube. We're going to do our after show. And uh, on, off that. So, you got, if you guys want to do the chat room, the chat room is uh, has a link in the Facebook as usual. We're going to cut off YouTube. Okay? So I'll see everybody on YouTube next time.